Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another edition of NDV Media's Trekking Across the Universe here on the network. Today, of course, is, and I should know this, July 20th, 2023, and it is a glorious Thursday evening out here on the West Coast. Look, you know who I am. Uh, oh, I'm only going by Roger today. I guess it should be Admiral Roger, but I'll have to fix that in a moment. I want to welcome my glorious co-host right now, Admiral Greg Good evening, young man. How are you doing? Good evening, sir. I'm doing well. Good to see you. It's good seeing you as well. And on my right, which I'm actually pointing to Montana when I do that, because I'm actually in my room today because it's so, so gosh darn hot today that I will, I will die if I'm out in my office right now. But that's neither here nor there. To my right, of course, is the incredible admiral michael day how are you michael i'm doing great just uh, glad to hear waiting to you know, see what happens this evening yes yes indeed quite a bit good evening elizabeth and thank you for joining us and for everyone else folks don't forget head on over to ndvmedia.net so you can check out what is happening on the network and for those of you that follow as you know the announcement today ever new will be concluding their run here on the network and their last episode uh, will be this Saturday. So you may, no, no, I apologize, no. not this Saturday, the next Saturday. But uh, big news on their part, so you may want to check it out. And uh, really good stuff. But this is Trekking Across the Universe. It is Thursday night and episode six today. And uh, lost in translation, I was looking for Bill Murray and Scarlett Johansson, and folks, sadly, I was a tad disappointed. But that's neither here nor there. That's a personal problem. You didn't see that? Episode. No. You didn't? Well, was she the dead crewman that Lieutenant Ramon I'm not allowed out? to say. You never know. Oh, man. Typical. Yeah, well, she was killed up front. So, eh. All right, I missed her. Gosh darn it. <laughs> but uh, I didn't see Mr. Murray as well. But tonight's episode was written by Denitra Johnson and David Reed. And, of course, it was directed by Dan Liu. I believe this is Dan's first directorial uh, outing. So I'm almost assuredly will be corrected on that, but we'll get to it. Uh, before we even begin, some thoughts. We're now starting the second half of the season. I'm going to ambush my co-hosts on that. And I'm trying to elongate the warning so then give me some thoughts about where we are now entering the second half of the season. And speaking of entering right now, the second half of the season, Almighty. How are you doing, Almighty? I'm doing pretty good. How are you fellas doing? Uh, I, I think we're doing well. And in this heat wave, I have to compare. I kid you not, folks. In the last hour, it was 97 degrees. It has now dropped down to 93. I am still not going to my hellhole. Michael, how hot is it where you're at right now? I'm trying not to. It was oh, about 93, really? but I don't oh. know what it is now. Even now, still at that hour? Wow. Yeah, I think it might have dropped. But I would um, I, Let me look at my I, phone because I'm still learning how to use this new phone. Oh, that's right. You have a yeah. new phone. Way to go, Admiral. I have a, a new phone. Oh, it has dropped. It's down to 83 now. Oh, you lucky dog. All right, Admiral Greg, what is the temperature where you're at, young man? I know you're muted right now. You might be a bit busy. Yeah, I think he is busy at the moment. So he is muted. Sorry. Is. <laughs> Sorry, the background here. Um, oh, yeah, good. no, we got up to 84 uh, this afternoon. Um, the humidity was much less, so it didn't really feel too bad. I'd hate to tell you all, it's only 75 right now. No, you're good, buddy. It's going to be that way for me in about three to four hours. It has stayed warm all day. So Elizabeth, who's up in Sacramento, just north of me, I am actually now pointing at Elizabeth. I know you can't see my hand, Elizabeth, or my arm, but I'm pointing at you. Almighty. Me too. Out there in uh, the Rust Belt, buddy, what are you looking at weather-wise? Uh, 87. Wow. Oh, it's hot, dude. That's crazy. Over I mean, the years. So, uh, where are you, Roger? Oh, I'm actually, forgive me, folks. I'm in the, what used to be the happy place in my life, the bedroom. Now it's just a morgue of memories. <laughs> so 
Oh, well, I, I, I was confused. I kept thinking, I kept thinking, well, no, that's not, that's not Michael, because he's, you know, because you know, we, I'm so used to your grudge, and you still couldn't, you still couldn't take your daughter's command center. Oh uh, no, <clears throat> and I apologize. I guess I was trying to be a little too smart, and now I'm paying for it. So <clears throat> I do apologize, but I guess that's what it is to live in the morgue. But uh, like I said, empty memories. I hear these noises and I see things in the past that, oh my goodness, it's just memories that I don't want to hold on to. I just can't go back. But anyway, you need yeah, that, was, that was a cheaper prize of something that happened in today's episode. Once again, lost in translation, going to it. Oh my, I was just going to go to everyone right now and, and well, give I us have, some I thoughts. Have, I, I missed last week's episode. Yeah. So I want to know, I don't know if, uh, if you discussed it, but was, was there a consensus if Spock and Nurse Chapel uh, did, a, did, did a genital meld? A what? Oh, that was more than a lot. No, oh, gen a genital no, they, meld. Yeah, they were, they were, yeah. I mean, that's yeah, what I thought really too, fun. but I just wanted to know if, if there was a consensus last week or even discussed because... Does this mean that this Spock does not have to wait every seven years? Oh, okay. Uh, that that's interesting. That it. Ooh, I don't know if it was discussed. The mm -hmm. gentlemen were kind enough. Yeah, we we actually did not discuss that. I was very. trying to be cute by saying a, saying a genital meld instead of banging or whatever. They would whatever you know. You get. Yeah, I I, I, I think only I Apple Gray got was, got the gist of what I was trying to say. <laughs> well, fair enough. I actually didn't get that, but when you said the thing about the seven years, I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah, I'm just saying. That. I mean, they. I'm just saying it looked like that was happening since she just pushed him on the bed. So I'm just saying this box doesn't have to worry about Pon Far. He can just do whatever you know. He can just go every seven minutes. I, I, I don't know. They kind of established that, like every time he was getting together with the Pring, they were uh, getting it on. So well, um, I guess you're right. You know, I, I think, you know, I actually went back and rewatched a mock time and <laughs> you, you, you get the impression there that, you know, they, he has to at that point in time. Like, well, yeah, a mock like, time. He, I mean, yeah, when you go back something. and watch that, I mean, he, he was, yeah, he, it, he was losing it. I mean, yeah, he was, that was the most emo, I mean, Oh, uh, Nima Way actually that was one of the rare uh, episodes where he could actually show some emotion and some acting instead of right. just, you know, being his, you know, how he is. But yeah, he was, you know, he crushed that view screen and he threw that tray at Nurse Chapel and every, you know, he he was really, you know, and he 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 didn't care if he, you know, at the, in the moment he didn't care if he killed Captain Kirk. Well, you know, and he thought he did. And then again, we got that big smile at the end, which was. Pretty and was, was probably worth the whole thing, but still, I know that's a whole different thing. But still, in a monk time, you know, he he had no, and if he didn't, he was going to die. So, pretty much, that's right. You know, yeah. I used that with some of the girls I was worth it. What I was with, and never bought it. I don't, I don't get it. I just, you know, I say if we don't do this, I'm going to die, and they just go fuck you. So you know, that's that's the way it goes. Well, the thing that I'm going to try now, if I ever start the dating thing again, is I'm going to try to do a survey person and go out to someone and just, you know, say, hey, I'm doing a survey for such and such and such. And, you know, if we don't finish up, do you mind if, you know, it's that meme that's going around where he's taking their number and he says, OK, well, uh, got your number. You mind if I call you? <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's lame and creepy, but that's neither here nor there. But, uh, um, anyway, I just want to know if that I just want to know. I mean, no. That was not comment on, but the guys were very cool because I ran out of time last week and I didn't get the last twenty minutes of the episode. I did see it today, so yeah. it, it's kind of it's kind of cool that we are, um, that we are. Um, all right, Michael, I apologize. Uh, see if you can go ahead and take care of that. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, oh my God, what was I going to say right now? Of. Uh, Oh my goodness, I lost my train of thought. So, uh, what what was it? It was about the episode, right? About last week's episode, Spock and Chapel 
get, getting all hot and heavy at the end there. Yeah, I've, I, 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 you know what? I get old. Doesn't I, have like to I wait said. seven years. Yeah, he, I, he, I, he wanted to explore those emotions. Yeah, I mean that's what kind of yeah. got me thinking too. Because <laughs> I mean, you know, Leonard never was never going to say I won't explore these emotions. I mean, you know, he completely brushed Nurse Chapel off all the time, but this Spock wanted, you know. To really go for i mean you know you know he wanted to explore the emotion so well i guess we'll see how this how this goes then because i mean it was kind of further discussed in the latest episode too the relationship so you know yeah yeah that was weird we can chat about that a bit when we get there that was an awkward scene that was yeah that was really something i ever i don't know I, I, we'll get, when we get there we'll discuss it but yeah that was that was interesting and so uh anything so anyway that, i just wanted to know about that last week if how i didn't know you just didn't you didn't get through it all the way but that was my question yeah. I just, we, we didn't get there and um in respect of roger not having been able to catch the whole episode at that time um you know my thoughts uh, i'm trying to think back what my thoughts were i was more concerned with how you know, how is all this going to pan out between, you know, Christine and Spock so that the relationship goes from, you know, Netflix and chill to um, <laughs> uh, kind yeah. of that cold, distant longing that Chapel has for him in, in the, I guess it's going to be, what, eight years from now? Yeah, but, yeah, but now they're just pushing it now. I don't think anything that we thought we knew is wrong. <laughs> the way things are going, I mean, you know, I don't know what kind of timeline yeah. this is. I mean, I don't know since this is completely, you know, almost different than what we're, what, you know, going by TOS. Right. Well, I, I mean, they really didn't develop it in TOS. I mean, it was, you know, it was obvious she pined for him. But we never really considered that Spock would ever. Yeah, yeah I, I, I know what you're saying, but Spock, oh, he, Spock just said he couldn't do it. You know, I'm, mm. you know, I'm, I'm a Vulcan. I can't, I can't do this. And we didn't know he anything about his when they mate until a month time. Like you, like you watched Greg. I mean, that's when we. Because you know, yeah, and in that he was really insistent that he, he was committed to spring, yeah, and that she shouldn't be chasing somebody else's husband. Uh, yeah, so you know, I mean, I know these are so. I mean, this whole thing with strange new worlds. I'm just putting this as a. I don't know. I don't think it's part of. I don't know what part of what universe or what timeline this is because it seems like it's completely different. it's supposed to be prime universe and we're really um, because i think yes. the writers are just having a little fun um well i don't mind a little know, fun but <laughs> but this you know, given the backstory does that mean that later on spock goes back to vulcan at some point and just really gets down to it and become and he comes back all stoic and I don't know because he's not again? supposed to go through the colon R until in between the series and the motion picture. Well, I I know that. I mean, yeah, that. So was... he wouldn't have gone through colon R by the time of. Um, well, he still could go back to Vulcan and get a tongue lashing, <laughs> or whatever whatever Vulcans use for a tongue lashing or whatever. But I'm just or saying. Or before the series is over, you know, he, him and Tupring are gonna. He will go through it to pump R again because I mean it's going to be sometime in the next year or two that he's due for pump R, um, and he's going to recommit to Tupring at that time and leave Chapel in the dust, and that'll be the beginning of the distancing between the two. But he, well, I mean, actually, the distancing started in in that episode. It did start the tonight, yeah. But with the frame tag it's saying she wanted to take some time away, I mean Yes, that's what I mean. It it yeah, began. I know what you meant, Roger. I just I I actually am curious if 
Spring and Stawn are going to hook up. Not oh, that I yeah. care for them to go there, but they've already introduced Stawn. Oh, really? When? I, yeah. I just... uh, oh, that's the right. Episode, yes, in the the season with, one, right? The episode with uh, Cyborg. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Season one. I, I did forget about that. But um, um, I don't know. I just, yeah, it's so I guess we'll find out, you know, mm. as time goes on. I mean, they can't really follow, follow uh, the prime timeline exactly because we know what's going to happen. So they have to throw curveballs at us. So because we to keep us guessing. Well, we um, actually know that there's a change if we go by tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow. The timeline has been changed and everyone's been talking about that. We kind of mentioned it in our review of the episode as well. Things have changed and we don't know where they're going to go. So um, I think one time, maybe in the off season, we'll have a conversation about the, off season. the timeline. We'll have a conversation about, you know, an alternate timeline. We'll talk about the mirror universe and, you know, it's, they're concepts that we grew up with and we understood, but in today's day and age, a lot of people are changing it. I mean, DS9 and uh, the, well, DS9 was the primary culprit where, let me just give you an example, and I'm really off base and I apologize. Look, in the episode, The Mirror Universe, it was specifically stated that what happened was because at those exact at that those oh my god at that exact moment both universes converge at that exact moment and the exchange of energy everything that's how they were able they were able to transport it was it was to that mirror universe if we understand yeah. the concept of mirror universe it's it's a myriad number so when DS9 went to the mirror universe that we know, it's, it's like the chances of that are statistically, it, it's just, no, it would have been another mirror yeah, universe. But they but, overplayed that so much, though. Yes, I mean, they my, did. I mean, that was something, it was, one, you know, once was awesome, but then they decided, you know what, let's do this all the time. And it's like, come on. This, and then everybody had to get on board and go over and meet their double. I mean, it, it, I don't know. Yeah, I didn't. It was too much. I didn't now, care for the Deep Space Nine Mirror episodes. Yeah, um, it was really cool where they brought Cisco's wife back. That was that was kind of that, that was, was all right. Of, yeah, yes. that yeah. was that was pretty cool. I and don't I, know. I just, I just really hated yeah. Mirror Cura. Yeah, and and and, and, and then major, that's fair. Seeing Major Cura in bondage was kind of an amount of job. It was kind of it. It was. I mean, it was just so over the. Oh, it was. I mean, you could yeah. tell that um, she was not comfortable. <laughs> I wouldn't. I wouldn't think so. Geez, ow. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm not going to comment on whether we know or don't know on whether it's comfortable or not, and I'm not going to observe that <laughs> because yeah. I wouldn't know myself. Well, but uh, uh, it, it, uh, apologies to Nana, but that she does. That she didn't do anything for me in that episode at all. So I mean, <laughs> but that's fair, folks. We are a bit off course. We're going to go ahead. I guess we are finishing. Oh, wait, up wait, a little... That's not the new what's going on, of course. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, <laughs> it's, yeah. We're we old. definitely go way off. <laughs> uh, yes, or Mirror Universe. We fell into a Mirror Universe. We're actually getting back in the course. How sad. Uh, the episode where we finished up, I was genuinely surprised where. Nurse Chapel basically flipped off the Vulcan Academy professor by saying, yeah, you know what? You guys are less. I didn't see that, and I enjoyed that. I did appreciate that Nurse Chapel uh, stood up to him and said, nah, I don't need you guys. So that was a good thing. So, so last week's episode? Yeah, and the one that you were talking about yeah, a moment yeah. ago. Yeah, that was, that was um, good, too, because, yeah, she decided, you know, I don't need you stuck-up assholes. So, yeah. Yeah, uh, I believe Greg just stepped away for a moment. He should be coming back. But as I say, yeah, I turned on um, the <laughs> there were quite a few things that happened, and I'm sorry I wasn't there to comment on them before. So it's all good. But we do have tonight's episode, 
uh, lost in translation. As I said, I'm sorry. Sadly, I didn't see my favorite <clears throat> actor, and uh, I was looking forward to her because I love her movie, Lost in Translation. But uh, I did not see her. Michael says that he did see her, but I didn't see Scarlett Johansson. So uh, I'm sorry. I think he was teasing you. Was he really? <laughs> So I are we I, all living I, in a multi? Are we living in an alternate universe, Greg? Oh, I have been for what about six years now, I think. Well, ever since some date in October of 2019, that would be mine. I've lived in an alternate universe, and I did. this one is shitty. It is. You don't want to open. Oh. oh, I'm not going to tell that story. I was going to tell a real stupid story, right? Like, ooh, no. It had to do with It'll be bit. out there forever. Be careful. <laughs> okay, fair enough. I'm dumb, and it's going to bug me to no end. Uh, I remember I was talking to someone, obviously someone of the opposite sex, shocking. And uh, this was a long time ago where I actually said, you know, in this you know, Oh, yes, thank you, Elizabeth. It doesn't take very much for me to spill. So um, I used, man, I, I was going Kirk on her, no doubt. And I was uh, saying, you know, that our lives are as we know them right here, right now. But there are alternate universes where you and I have never even met. And there are alternate universes where you and I hate each other passionately. Hell, there's even one where you probably killed me and I in turn have killed you. There are so many alternate in the Mary, the 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 multi universe theory that we've lived every conceivable situation, everything. So I went all meta on her, telling her, but the saddest one of all is in the universe where we never meet. Dude, that was deep. And I go show you how desperate I was. I was using Star Trek. <laughs> and how quickly did she run away? Actually, she didn't, surprisingly. Oh, oh good for she you. She was tolerant of Star Trek. She was a Lord of the Rings fan, and... Uh, she was all right, but that's neither here nor there. That was a long, long time ago. So sorry, Elizabeth. I disappointed. Eh, probably her back then, too, you know, so it is what it is. So we'll go ahead and move on. Tonight's episode, Lost in Translation. Begin. Oh, well, some of your opening thoughts uh, before we begin the episode. Uh, obviously, if there's something you want to get to right away, remember, we don't have to go beat by beat, but... Um, some of your thoughts, Greg, that you want to get out, or we'll get to it as we move along. Um, initial thoughts were, yes, I knew this was going to be uh, kind of like a mystery episode based on the tease from last week's uh, Ready Room. Um, so I, I just had the venue wrong. I thought they were in the engine, not at a, on a station. And um, we've got... Um, we knew it was going to be an Ahura episode. We knew Jim Kirk was going to be back. So, I mean, it, there was a lot to look forward to this one. And I was really hoping with the promise of mystery and that we would get a um, an adventure episode, uh, and we did. So I was pleased to for you know return to you know the you know a story where. You know the the phenomenon that they're experiencing is the prime story. Um, you know the there was a lot of exposure of the ship, uh, places on the ship we hadn't seen before. Um, there, so that was fun for me, and um, I I think this is you know this is where I think the series should be for you know for ten episodes of a sci-fi drama. This is where you know this is the type of episodes we should be getting yes they revisited the trope but they did it in a kind of unique manner and it was very entertaining i really like when this show goes down the dark horror path all right very appreciate that uh richard i agree with craig because, you know, we got, a, like he said, a mystery, and it wasn't, you know, as a, it was a mystery episode. It wasn't like a bunch of violence going on, and and there were some also character developments besides Uhura and everybody else. You know, we got, uh, 
the engineer, I can't remember her name. And soon, you know, they had, you know, they discussed their differences. I mean, they had a little, there was some character development between those two. So that was awesome to see. Uh, once again, like you said, Jim Kirk came over. Did Jim Kirk just come over to visit his brother? Uh, no. So right after the opener, we learned that Pike has been given a uh, rank of fleet commander coordinating repairs. So um, Kirk is the now the first officer on the Farragut. Um, there was some interaction that we can talk about between them. Well, between actually, Jim about we're that there. Too. I, I think he's in first officer in all but name because I think they said that it's not going to be official yet because he's training a replacement or something like that. Oh, right, right. Yeah, so now, but I'm just thinking, okay, I, 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 I get what you're saying, but what I don't understand is why didn't the captain talk to Captain Pike? The captain of the Farragut did not interact with Pike at all unless that was something off screen. I'm trying, you know, if you're a, if you're a if you're in command of a fleet, you would talk to the captain and have some kind of powwow. I mean, right. Picard, Bart, Picard would do it when they would get together with other starships. They'd all powwow with the other captains, and so did Kirk. And that's why I'm asking: Did I just you know we didn't see the other captain from the Farragut? We just saw Jim Kirk. And I kept thinking, well, what was his purpose? I mean, was he there to visit his brother? And I was, yeah. Um, I, mean, I mean, I understand what you're saying about the first officer going over, but still, since there was no battle situation, why didn't the captain come over and talk to Pike and get some kind of a convo going? That's, I mean, I don't care. I like seeing this James Kirk, so I'm not going to complain about it. But when you think about it, like, well, why is he over there? I mean, it's not like a dangerous away mate away mission where you send your first officer and well he's jim kirk anyway he'd go even to captain he went anyway so we know what jim kirk would do anyway but uh i mean i i was surprised at the lack of protocol because you know i know that they're brothers but still there has to be an, an acknowledgement that they go you know first officer kirk or commander kirk and whatever brother and then you say jimmy and and sammy because there has to be there still has to be some kind of protocol there. And uh, yeah. later, later in the episode, soon just goes James. Okay, what's okay? What, what do you mean? He he just he doesn't. Know, I mean, James has no basis for this for this comment. You know, it's like, come me. I'm a, I, no. I'm the first. I outrank you. I'm the first. I'm I'm a. I'm the first officer. You don't just call me James right off the bat. So I mean, I mean, I know there was things going on, but still, it seems like they were a little lax there I, I know maybe it's just me but you know i understand what they're trying to get because i mean she's familiar with jim right i mean because of but that, not that jim yeah not well but i still but she still thinks of that jim as jim right right I mean, that's what we're getting at. I mean, she still thinks that, 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 that's, weird. that that that's the jim that she left on the planet I mean, now two, two episodes ago okay I had to rewatch it. That scene. Does Kirk remember? Because when she said James, again, but based on what Almighty is saying right now, that was a little lax. And the way he just stayed silent, I thought that was a little more. I mean, they may have been coy about it. Maybe there's nothing there. I'm misreading it. At first, I thought. Well, it's, but wasn't that wasn't that too different, James? I mean, there wasn't. They weren't the same, James. It's, I, yeah, no, it, it and, is. It's like I brought up before, I said, "What happened to the other Jim's body when everything went snapped back? Did that just disappear? Because that, we have that body right. left on the planet." And I uh, want. Well, I'm and sure on, the time. Later got. on, I kept thinking, "What happened to him? He just." I'm sure they cleaned up. <laughs> he just <laughs> disappeared, like. Like, I, I had the thought that maybe that's the one in section 31. Oh, I see. Who now, uh, maybe that's one of the great mysteries about the paradox and all this. Crap. Let me go oh, a little yeah. hardcore on you, gentlemen. In uh -oh. the section 31 novels, this is a family show. James Kirk. 
you you had the nerve to quote that to me <laughs> this is a family show yeah. all right fair enough considering okay. what we opened with tonight <laughs> i guess <laughs> yeah um, i just okay if, if there were a rank issue, and actually there might be a rank, it depends how you interpret well, that a, word. You got a, a uniform though, Raj. But uh, yeah, you. but I sure as hell but not wearing. It, it does appear to be a regulation undershirt. Oh, okay. Yes, I'm, I'm going with the uh, the Kelvin uh, the the Kelvin verse, the JJ Abrams verse. Okay. You know, for I, I'm I'm surprised, and you know it's funny. I actually had someone, a neighbor, tell me, says, "Dude, do you ever change?" Your t-shirt because you wear black all the time now. Who are you mourning? I said, well, since I live in my room, the 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 more. Just kidding. Um, I have fifteen black t-shirts. Um, thank you. Uh, I appreciate that, Elizabeth. Did you know, Elizabeth, that in another universe? <laughs> just kidding. Anyway, anyhow, exactly. <laughs> um, and you know what? I I wasn't really thinking about that, so. Uh, that's fair. Oh, anyway, in the novels. Sorry, I am all over the... Oh, we got a like, folks. We got to see where we got the like from. And uh, I may not be able to see... It. Oh, sorry. Ooh, I'm using my iPad for this one. And I'm not able to see who's the one that actually liked today's episode. I, I figure that's one from Elizabeth, so it's all right. Um, yeah. Anyway, yeah. Uh, now, now I'm actually starting to blush because now I'm realizing how stupid I was a moment ago. <laughs> Um, in, in the Section 31 novels, there were four books at the time. I know I did this. There were four books. And Kirk is a member of Section 31. And they pointed out to a specific incident. I My memory, I'm going to have to find my review because when I wrote, oh, if someone wants to actually bore the crap out of themselves, you can head on over to Amazon.com and find the Section 31 novels, the original four crossover, and I reviewed all four novels. You can find it under Roger D. Noriega. And you can find, find all my reviews uh, there, both good and bad. But anyway, so Kirk is, I have to assume, Kirk being who he is, he's got to be a guy from Section 31. So I can see that he is, but I believe the Time Cops did clean up tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow. And I don't see how he could be involved. It just seemed like the way he responded to La'an, letting her get away with James, it just, it struck me at first that he would get, he would let an underling just be that uh, informal, especially in a dangerous situation. It's Lieutenant Kirk Hanson, or Lieutenant, but... Yeah, okay. I, I get that, but I just... I still think he's kind of confused as to why he con why she, how why she contacted him to begin with with this records issue. I still think he's kind of wondering what really I mean what's going on here. I think he's still confused about that a little bit. I think that's still on his mind. Okay, that's funny, Richard, because being that I am the non-Kirk of all the men here, if if Kirk is contacted by a woman with the reputation that he has, do you think Kirk's like, oh? That was strange. A woman contacted me. Come on, man. He thinks the entire universe wants to go. <laughs> and, 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 you know, he, 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 yeah, that's what I mean. So, Richard, I get that, but I'm going to argue that where he's well, like, then, but no, but, 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 but that proves woman? the point. That's why he let, but that's why he lets it go then because, oh, okay. see, it all, it all comes to, see, even what you said makes it all come Everyone to, wants oh, yeah, a piece well, of curse. I'm going to let it go because, you know, Maybe she, uh, you know, she, he, because I, I don't know. I mean, I don't know. Uh, it, you know, I know what you mean about Kirk. So Kirk's, you know, Kirk doesn't want to, but still Kirk, I mean, this is still a young Kirk yet. I mean, even though he's a lieutenant, I mean, you know, if it was Captain Kirk, he might, you know, but I don't know. It's just, I mean, I know what you're trying to say, but this Kirk wouldn't remember anything. I, I think. Right. Yeah, he, he, he definitely would not remember. There's no doubt about that. I mean, really, he's trying to play catch-up when it comes to soon. Yeah, he knows that there's something weird with her. And so yeah. Especially the way, he look, the way she looks at him. Like, he's he's like, he, he, he's like her, his look, her looks, you know, like, has a confused, 
confuse him too. Like, what's wrong with this woman? <laughs> yeah. Um, I guess they're, they meet in the third act after Lieutenant Ramon gets uh, out and loose. But that's okay. Yeah. 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 But, but uh, I guess that was her first physical one. And it was interesting how Kirk did say, uh, you owe me a drink. That's Kirk. In this episode, I, I don't know if you caught it earlier, uh, Captain, but um, Admiral, Admiral Greg stated earlier that this is this is the Kirk that we know. And folks, up until now, yeah, I, I was like, okay, see where this guy is going. But the way the character was written in this in the most recent episode, this is the Kirk that I recognize. This is the Kirk that was not in the Abrams verse. Don't get me wrong. That's a good Kirk. He's exciting. But that's not the Kirk that we know. His life was different. Right. This is the one. And there were there were images of it today. And yep. I even commented before we went live. You all saw that I said I had six pages of notes. Half a page was Kirk's speech, yeah. which they made a joke of earlier when uh, number one comes aboard the bridge. And she goes, oh, did I miss your speech? That was kind of that funny. Was, that was Pike. That was Pike. Right, where she says to Pike, yes. Yes. We also, but we also got the dynamic also between uh, Jim and Sam. The brothers, how they, yeah. So we get that dynamic too. How they're kind of in a competition, and it seems like even competition to get for their dad's uh, favor. So we had, I mean, there was a lot going on in this episode as far as character development and character interaction. I think, and that's what makes Trek Trek. It is. It is. Oh, I I, I completely forgot that was a little trippy too, wasn't it? Yeah, but anyway, <laughs> you know, I'm just saying. I mean, they, you know, we leave. You know, the, we they're in the this ship has a has a lounge, which is nice. I mean, this ship is it like does you know the TARDIS the TARDIS <laughs> effect. I you know, like I talked about the TARDIS effect. I mean, did you see how big your quarters were? Yeah, it's like big efficiency apartments. Like holy crap! <laughs> but you know, I I understand that it's a new it's a new time, but still. Yeah, it's also a starship, right? I mean, we're supposed to be in an early, but anyway, it doesn't matter. It's also a slightly larger enterprise than the classic Trek enterprise. Well, maybe it is. I mean, you have a third of the crew. Yet. And Flash, you said there's only 200 on this ship, too, didn't you? Yeah, or, or well, half the crew. Yeah. So actually, they could have a little bit bigger quarter if there's only half the crew. So that, that makes sense, too. But uh, yeah, there's like I, four I, I can't, just to jump ahead. I'm curious how they go the next week with the two characters from Lower Decks who are essentially bunking in a corridor on the Cerritos. <laughs> Wait a minute, they're what? Have you watched Lower Decks? No, all I the know Lower Decks, the yes. The characters, but... the main characters. All right, they're on, but I didn't hear the last part of what you said. Oh, they they're bunk. They're, oh. They, they're beds, they're quarters there um there is basically a ward that's like a deck in the middle of like literally the lowest deck on the hall yeah well, well if you go back to the real quick you know we're talking about that even in the motion motionless picture they had bunks for the lower for the lower crew member too they all had bunks yes. on room like a like a submarine or whatever you want to call it. So yep. even that even that A still had you know a, yep and, had and little, little, a little, had bunks yep because yeah. you know remember you know and that, you know they run in there and grab those boots and say you did this and the guy had couldn't wear the boots he had those big feet and those strange little toes but yeah it was yeah and so. Kirk's quarters looked smaller than his quarters in the refit Enterprise. And right. then when they showed Sulu's quarters on the Excelsior in Star Trek VI, um, that literally reminded me of a submarine quarter. Yeah, uh, I, mean, I thought that shit an was officer's, Yeah, an officer's uh, quarters on a submarine 
are essentially a bed and a desk. Yeah, yeah, it is. I mean, but I'm just, you know, anyway, <laughs> we're off, we're getting off. But, Look, you know. a cruise ship that I was recently on, my room looked to be bigger than Kirk's quarters in Star Trek Six: The Undiscovered Country. Yeah. And I had a small suite. Or, I'm sorry, room, cabin, cabin, cabin. There it is. So, one of my issues with what I've seen called New Trek is how much empty space is on the, these ships. Um, I, I did not serve in the Navy, I worked in shipbuilding for a number of years, and there is no wasted space. On yeah. The ship. Yeah, I've been on several ships. I, I know what you're talking about. I was aboard the uh, the USS Stetham, an Arleigh Burke destroyer, and I was also aboard the USS um, oh my, uh, the McCluskey. It was a Oliver Hazard Perry frigate. There's no room aboard those ships. Nope. Yeah, my first serve. experience with the destroyers was stepping onto the deck and realizing exactly how wide 60 feet looks oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, there, and there's no there was no room on the apollo capsules there was nope. actually no room in the space shuttle and there's, everything there's is compact. very little room in the space station I mean, like you said they don't waste any space and these ships are like oh look there's got all this open space and green space and it's like okay but, well i remember one of the comments about enterprise uh by nasa and astronauts and stuff and they said you know they they made an effort to yes. make it look like they were just not far removed from today's programs because if you think about it uh enterprise took place in 2151 so it's a little over from today approximately 130 years so but that's from today all the know designers is, actually had room for a dog yeah, the designer is sorry. The, sorry. Go ahead. I was going to say, I still have room for a dog on Enterprise. That was kind of. Uh, yeah. Go ahead, Greg. <laughs> the, I remember when Enterprise came out, I read an article um, that the designers actually did consider, you know, submarine design and yeah. naval vessel design. You know, there was a lot of, you know, things that you could see in the corridor sets you know that you would see in a corridor of a destroyer or a submarine or um an aircraft carrier which actually is huge <laughs> compared to the others and, 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 and you got oh, the, hey, hey, with, the, with the tos enterprise and like we said enterprise a with all the all the bunks and stuff and yeah but these these you know it all started with uh, next gen when we had these fancy uh cruise ships with families on them that you know, and it was, I never understood that, but I'm not going to go, that's another discussion. It's, it's extended, about. Yeah, so the explanations there is all seem, uh, you know, in both canon and non. Yes, I love your uniform, show off. And <laughs> um, yeah. have, have, seems to have always been that these are for extended missions. Um, it's a live, work, play space. It um, is a place where you bring your family. Uh, there are schools, there are children, um, you know, there's, you know, not just an arboretum, but, you know, a quarter of the deck is practically the arbor, well, at least in one set of plans I saw was the arboretum and um, fresh food produce. Um, one, of, this is a big aside, but one of the things I always thought was cool on the um, Enterprise D was the idea that they had cetacean mammals on board as part of the navigation crew um cetacean and, ops and, yeah and sternbox designs uh the, the big layout of all the deck plans he included tanks for dolphins and whales and i i just thought that was really neat anyway, you know that uh, uh, the, 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 <laughs> Admiral, I had those plans. I had the technical manual by Okuda and Sternbach, and I, I had seen cetacean ops. And I I know the word cetacean, but I never equated it until Lower Decks really went wild with it, which was really funny. That was funny. 
I, I have to admit that was cool. And then I, I understood the joke, but I do not have a Spock helmet. I've never had one. I never will have one. And, yeah, uh, even at what it, when that came out, it was what seventy, it was seventy five, seventy six. I thought yeah. that never was in Star Trek. That's a piece of crap. <laughs> yeah, but surprisingly, it sold a bit. But now it is. Uh, Who knew? Now? <laughs> now, look, that moment in Lower Decks, which, by the way, folks, forgive me. When I saw, I think it's entitled "No Small Parts." the final episode to Lower Deck Season 1. Uh, Captain, have you seen Lower Deck? You have, haven't you? A few, yeah. Okay, well, then I'm not going to spoil any more than I normally do. Greg, I, you've seen Lower Decks, of course. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah, Season 1, the final episode. Folks, when, when I saw that 30-minute cartoon, I was genuinely blown away. I felt it was a movie. So much was happening in that episode it was terribly exciting i'm not going to say it had tropes in it because we're talking basic well, story it, lower that's the whole point of lower decks it, it's, yeah it's star trek doing futurama on star trek <laughs> yes. oh and by the way july 24th futurama returns to hulu on monday and i'm debating whether i'm going to do a future well hell i'm going to i just don't know when i'm going to do it but i will be doing futurama I have not asked anyone to join me, but I want to do a Futurama. So I don't know if we're going to add it in to Thursday's program or just something, but I don't know. But what the heck? Let's run to 1 a.m. Oh, <laughs> yeah, why not? Why not? Well, no, no. It's on Monday. Yeah, but you said you didn't know if you were going to include it in Thursday's program. Right, right. Yes, that's right. I, 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 I don't know yet. So we'll see. Uh, but yeah, as you know, we are going to be doing Ahsoka. Oh, great. I believe um, Aaron will be returning with us next week. So, okay. Yeah. Um, from These Are the Voyages. So really happy with that. So um, as you know, folks, we're going to be doing Ahsoka as well. But I guess I missed. I didn't check my calendar. We're way off topic on this one now. But uh, we're going to be doing Ahsoka on Thursday, not Wednesday. Oh, God, who needs sleep? Let's go all night. You're very polite, Elizabeth. Um, I can go, but Greg, unfortunately, is still, and as captain as well, they they, they have commitments. I mean, actually, are, so are, are, are you, Elizabeth, are you not in our generation? I thought I, she was. I, we were, before the show tonight, we were discussing the benefits of napping and the detriment of not getting the opportunity to nap. <laughs> I, I was unhappy because both Michael and Greg did get a nap today. I did not. But I will tell you that I have had naps on uh, Tuesday and Wednesday. I didn't have one today, obviously. Folks, I got heat stroke on Monday. It And right here in this room. <sighs> I guess I was watching the electricity bill because I knew it was going to get high and I was being a little cheap and I didn't put it on till we got to 80 degrees indoors. And that was stupid. It shot up to almost 100 and I, I got a heat stroke on Monday. So when you see, yeah, when you see on Tuesday, unfor I, I didn't want to go back and look at the episode, but I apologize to my co-host. I was told people were like, dude, what's going on? Said, well, nothing. Nothing. So, I am out of it. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's ninety degrees inside. I'm fine. <laughs> that's right, Elizabeth. I apologize. You you did say that. Yeah, you're right. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, you're I, right. Once once I went back to school at the age of twenty eight, and went back to first shift, uh, I lost that third shift overnight mentality. This I was a second shifter for years as a draftsman. And when I went back to school, went to first shift. Uh, yeah, I lost that. I am not a morning person, but just things happen better at night. So I was lucky when I finally got a regular shift. I was always closing when I worked well, at close to the anyway, right? middle. I worked, I think it was three to twelve, and when I was at thrifties, I worked two to eleven. Almost at, oh, when I was at Carl's Junior, I worked all late shifts. Oh wow. Yeah, I get. I it. like the shift differential. I needed that extra forty bucks a week. 
Oh, yeah, I, I don't think I ever got that. They they were cheap bastards. But that's well, okay. if you're if you're working Carl's Jr., I mean, you're you're lucky if you can be on a consistent shift week to week. <laughs> Well, for me, it was I was a shift supervisor, so I left out due to my management experience. They uh-huh. put me in as low end, so I was ensign. I was I was an ensign in Carlos Jr. Yes, I was the lowest commissioned officer that you could have. So, uh, but that's neither here nor there, folks. We are way, way, way off. So it's all good. Um, uh, there was a lot to like in this episode. But unfortunately, there's going to be something that I will go talk about later on today. It, this was an episode of interest, but it, something happened near the very end that I just, I did not find. And we'll get to that as we move through the episode. But wow. I was completely turned off by this episode, by the very end. And uh, it had nothing to do with Chapel and Spock had nothing to do with that uh it just something in the storylines and, and i thought the story was good had my in- attention throughout the episode i kept thinking all right this sounds like where silence has lease the next generation episode and then there was there were other episodes which this one was bringing to mind as greg has mentioned the trope concept look folks the greeks they yeah. invented, look, the Greeks invented all of the basic storylines. I forget if there's either 16 or 32. They've been told already. Okay, so there are no new stories. So we, we, we look for the creativity and how you tell this story. And this and one did also, have my attention. Oh, well, we also look, sorry, Roger. But we also look how these different characters react to the, to the same storyline, too. I mean, yeah. Yeah. that's a big thing, or- too. For me, it was the combination of elements. Um, uh, you know, it, there's a really good fan film out there called Ghost Ship. Yep. Zombies on the Enterprise. That's what I was oh, going to say. Yeah. <laughs> when Uhura was in the, in, the, in the, at the beginning when she was in the turbo lift, and I thought they just go over to casting over Walking Dead, grab some some cast member and throw him in the turbo and stick a badge on him. I think, Wait a minute. She looked like a zombie from The Walking Dead. Just like, but uh, I think I'm curious what um, you're going to get to later. But um, yeah, it's the combination. I think most of this episode, you know, they combined the whole weird entity living in a nebula thing pretty well. I mean, they did entity in a nebula last season. So my beginning, you know, I, I knew right away this was going to be an entity in the, in the natural thing. And, but <laughs> I, I thought they pulled it together well. Yeah. And we'll, we will go over a lot of things that were good in this episode. It's just, unfortunately, I realized it. It just turned me off. Well, and we, look forward, we look forward I, to getting there. I mean, I'm kind of curious. Too. Well, I, I, if we all feel the same way, or just to see what you're, what, you're, what yeah. I mean, it's it should keep us all at, at you know at the edge of our seats until we get there. Well, I guess I just want to say that before I forgot. So, if anything, we'll remind uh, um, you. <laughs> now we oh, will remind you. Yeah, I, I figure not. Um, it was interesting how the episode began. They established that they're on the edge of known space. And lo and behold, they find a nebula. And what was different about this nebula is uh, they called it Benin's Nebula. And we start the episode with Ohura's uh, voiceover as she's recording her personal log. And she's like, hey, I've been to many nebulas in my day. <laughs> she didn't say it that way. I'm sorry. I was just being stupid. I was That, that might come across as immature. And I didn't mean for that. Um, I, I just meant in the country way. It's like, I've seen this before. <laughs> And she says, but there's something different about this nebula. There's deuterium in here. So, and as we know, folks, deuterium in the process is part of the intermixed chamber. So remember, remember the, okay, I'm not going to get into the engineering. You guys have all read it. We use matter and antimatter. And the deuterium, for lack of a better word, is the coolant. So 
Go ahead, Admiral. It's not the matter. Actually, yeah, maybe. All right. It well, you see, I always leave the engines in charge of my first officer. That for that, <laughs> reason, I, I am the Picard. I'm the. I, I have, yeah, with the engineering background. So, deuterium is a stable isotope an engineer. of hydrogen. Well, on a starship. You're an engineer. On a starship. Son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> well, for anyone who knows my life and having to deal with civil engineers who are... Yes. And talk about yes. civil engineers. Do you know the thing about civil? It's just it, that that is a misnomer right there. Civil. It, no, no, it's uh, uh you until you work with one that's in government service, you have no concept. But the idea of working, oh, I'm sorry, we don't do that anymore. The idea of working with one, it's just not there. There's no such thing. Right. You cannot. They suffer from the God complex. I mean, they are V'ger. They are the Takan outpost. They are Q. They are everything rolled up in one. If they had magic powers, we'd all be dead. <laughs> the engineer in civil service Okay. I know. I haven't done my good deed yet. So anyway, okay. I apologize. But yeah, I, I I had an, I had a bureaucratic interaction today. Hi, Jan. <laughs> yeah, it's just it's it's just a waste of time. They, I and I catch them all the time when they they sneer and stuff. And I've told them I say, hey. I speak English. I'm not stupid. I know exactly what you just meant by that. And, you know, the thing was that people disliked that I would point that out. It, there's there's a level of decorum required. Well, to quote the guy in the movie, he's an asshole. So I'm, he's acting like one. My right and privilege as a human being to let him know. If he's going to act that way, so be it. I have no filter. I am Spock without the emotions. Oh, I thought there was going to be a comment there, but I guess not. So anyway, Ohura's <laughs> talking about what they're doing on the edge of known space. And I thought it was kind of cool. We hadn't seen the original series Enterprise or any of the Enterprises other than in Star Trek Insurrection actually activate the Bussard collectors. We've seen them used when they expel stuff, right? That happened in the next generation, and it may have happened on DS9, but in Insurrection, remember, we see the Riker maneuver, and he they collect all of the, the, the elements, and then they fire them off. In this episode, we see the Enterprise, and I thought that was a really cool effect, the visual effect of seeing the Bussar collectors open up and taking in. That was kind of cool. I don't know what your thoughts were on that, guys. I mean, that I got to give it to the... the I was going to say the special ed guys, but I'm sorry. The special effects guys. Hey, sorry. Hmm. Okay. That was a Freudian. Oh. oh, that's my drug time. Forgive me, folks. Sorry for flashing you. <laughs> Elizabeth, was it good for you? I just flashed you. <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> that, no, oh, that was see awesome. What <laughs> That was awesome. And also to see the um, the set of the uh, little station at the top of the Jeffreys to that we oh hey kitty kitty that we saw at um, um, in next generation um, a couple times and in Enterprise um, when they were up in between, the, the deuterium collection system and yes. the rest of the nacelle where the warp field was generated. Yeah. It was cool. And I believe it was just after that when they used the uh, Bussard collectors where Ohura hears it for the first time on speakers. So yes. looking back, I'm like, oh, duh. They're collecting the stuff, which we'll get to in a little bit that was a first hint i did not equate that one this was the old man of me just like ooh, neat colors that was the first thing that happened they're collecting them for lack of a better word and they're making contact 
So that was crazy. And then um, I guess there were some issues, and Ohura then goes down to engineering. And we meet up with Admiral Greg's favorite character in season two so far. And uh, someone gets a bit offended. What are you doing, she says. Oh, no, it just happened so often that Ohura says that I'm just here recalibrating. It's what I do. I'm recalibrating the communications array. And I asked to do it so many times that I guess I should just stop asking and do it myself. And Hemmer is the one that trained her how to do it. And she's watching the video. And folks, let me tell you, last night, the headlamp on my muscular Nissan Versa SV 1.6 liter went out. And I went out and changed the headlamp on my car for the first time ever. Thank you. The non-engineer of the family. And uh, I did that. And what did I do? Did you make sure it was even? Actually, no. But that's all right. Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, so I'm good. But I did make sure it was the correct part. You know where I went? <laughs> I went to Hora. And I went to the video. I found it on YouTube. How do you replace the uh, light bulb on the uh, headlamp of a Nissan Versa? So that was good. Yeah, cool. I like the ones where you only have to replace the bulb. because That's what it was for me. Oh, you just had to replace have, the bulb, not the whole uh, unit. That's fine. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. when you do have to replace the whole unit, that's when you go and have to have to. Yeah, you have to. You have to put that. You have to put that string and just make sure. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah, that's right, gentlemen. I forgot about that, and I should have made that clear. It was just the bulb, because yep. you're right. Um, I remember in the cars, several cars that I owned, you had two screw, uh, two screws, right? For yeah, exactly. No, I didn't yep. have to do that because it was so, just the light bulb itself. Yep. Yeah, okay. you're right. All right, yeah, that's cool. You're fine. Yeah. The worst sure. one was the Plymouth Polari that we got from my grandmother-in-law, my wife's grandmother. It was yeah. old 70s Plymouth Polari. It didn't last very long in Maine. Um, once it actually Oh, yeah. Used. <laughs> yeah, I I'm can not gonna, I'm not going to sing the song. No, no. It, 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 it did have the rich Corinthian letter, however. Now, was that Ricardo Montalban or Mr. Zorro that did Volare? No, it was Ricardo Montalban. It was, wasn't it? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That is cool. Well, we see a scene where she's trying to fix it, and Hemmer is having a a cool moment with her. And he says, oh, what, you think so I'll sweet. let you blow up the ship? Come on, man. And then she starts to do something, and he makes her jump three feet. He says, and lesson number two, be less gullible. <laughs> I thought that was cool. That was some good interaction stuff. It was kind of neat. I kind of missed the character Hemmer. And uh, that was kind of neat because he did have a special relationship with her. There's no doubt. There was a tease that he was going to be back this season, but they didn't elaborate in what context. And, you know, I, I liked the way they did it. I, I liked that. He did have a sense of humor, but it was nice seeing it in this, in this moment right there. And then they're talking about organizational difficulties on the problems that they're having, I guess, with the outposts and the crew, right? Go ahead, Greg, you're laughing. Tell me. Oh, uh, so this, this is why. So of course, you know, number one and Pelia, right off the bat, are like all, um, oh, no, that was later. So, yeah, no, first, uh, Pike's telling number one, he's got to go over, she's got to go over, and then everything's all foobard over there. And, um, yeah, the what two months behind and getting yeah. the Ethereum collection system up and running and um so yeah so not only do they need this I mean this in the businesses I've been in we called them tiger teams not only did they need the station crew they needed the engineering staff from the Farragut and the engineering staff of the enterprise and the station operations people weren't in charge of the operation pike had fleet command over the operation well that's right richard remember at the very beginning 
uh, they comment about congratulations, you've been promoted to fleet captain. He says, yeah, 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 yeah. Fleet captain of Farragut, Enterprise, <laughs> and the refinery. It's just temporary. So that's what I meant that he didn't have any powwow with the captain of the Farragut. I mean, he was he was in charge, and that's what I'm. I said yeah. earlier that there was no community. I guess we're supposed to assume this all happened off screen because why would you, you'd have to. It you had, would have had to have. On some route, kind possibly. of briefing, wouldn't you, wouldn't you, guys? Yes. Yes. They've always had there have, before. Yeah, there have been times, I think um, they did it in Next Generation a couple times, where uh, Riker was the active liaison while Picard remained on the Enterprise. And so in this case, I think it would make sense with um, Una going to the station to lead the repair teams that and that um, God, Kirk, duh, Jim Kirk came over to the <laughs> Enterprise um, to, you know, coordinate between the Farragut and the Enterprise on behalf of Pike. And his own captain. So, little, little. Ba I want to do want to back up to your earlier comments, Richard. So, one of my thoughts on this was is this was a little bit of a pricier episode um, between the special effect, new special effects, new set, um, additional characters. We had you know lots of crewmen in zombie makeup, even though they were prone most of the time. Um, I suspect they might not have wanted to hire another actor for the captain of the Farragut. <laughs> <laughs> well, they could have found some kind of fill in that was just standing around doing the lights. Well, I looked up the young actor that played uh, Saul, uh, Saul Ramon and um, he's from Toronto, so they didn't even have to pay him travel time. <laughs> they could have found they, yeah. could have found they could have found somebody to work for scale yeah no they they could have but um you know from a, a story perspective they had a lot of interpersonal relationships yeah. but usually when on. they have a captain like that they want to make it a, at least a notable a, a notable star you know they always have somebody like oh okay i remember them from that tv show or movie or whatever so they usually oh, try, or or even someone from a, a, a past show, you know, so. Oh, or somebody who dying to do a cameo. Yeah, there's always somebody that wants to be on that, be on the Star Trek show. I mean, yeah, but so, but you're right. There was a lot going on and there was a lot of effects because you had the station and a lot of the ship. I mean, we got it, like you, like you said earlier, Greg, we got to see a lot more of the ship in this episode. So, yeah. Yep. I imagine the station set was pretty small um, and that the, it was augmented with um, either they were using the augmented reality space or green screen. And plus yeah. they had more actors in this too, even <laughs> the extras that are dead in the, that, you know, later on when who hallucinates and sees all these dead crew members. So, I mean, there's a lot of people running around on this ship. Yeah, I, I'm starting to notice like, you know, when they have a lot of people around and when they don't. Like yeah. The bridge seems pretty empty most of the time. It, it, it did seem a bit empty, but when I saw the red shirt at the con station, I said, oh, he's dead. That's that's the first thing I, <laughs> I saw that new guy there or whoever was there. Oh, yeah, he's gone. And uh, I said, okay, yeah, nice knowing you, pal. It's just it was funny because he was wearing a red shirt. Um, I well, did the only thing I noticed on the bridge is that it's like it's almost like uh, it's like Pike's women. Oh yeah, dude, that guy's I mean, surrounded remember, by them. Remember, you remember Mud's women? This is like Pike's women. It's like okay, we understand, you know, strong women characters, but the whole bridge. It's so all it makes like it makes Pike kind of look bad because he's got all these women under, you know. He looks, but anyway, that's, that's what I, you know, that's Fox on the bridge. <laughs> you know, to mix it up a little bit. Uh, by the way, this is going to be an ugly, ugly segue, folks. And this, um, in 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 the latest world 
of Star Trek, Star Wars, Marvel, and everything, a phrase Mary Sue is used often. I didn't get it for the longest time, and I understand what it is, the derisive tone of what the Mary Sue is. But the way Mary Sue is used is ignorant by many people because I listen to their arguments and stuff. But when, when you get someone who's very smart and they explain Mary Sue, and it's not me, so I was reading this comment, said the Mary Sue character is just fake in every which way. And that is the annoying thing about this character when you have a Mary Sue. Because he said, look, Ripley, Sigourney Weaver, no one would ever call that person a Mary Sue. And you know why she was a Mary? She was a, a phenomenal character because she was well written and well acted. You want another non Mary Sue? Sarah Connor. There was another one who was real, well written. Whether you talk about the additional movies or not, it doesn't matter. The point is, these were real characters, and that's what made them good. And even our princess, Princess Leia Organa. I'm not talking about the one that was in the the ben, the uh, Kenobi series. I'm talking about the Princess Leia that we knew in the original movies. These were well written characters. Oh, I thought the young lady that did Kenobi was awesome. I'm sorry, Greg. I thought the young girl that did uh, Kenobi was awesome. I thought she was oh, okay. spot on. I'll have to go back and rewatch your reviews. I'm, I'm oh no, no, no! It's, I, I just. I, I I meant I wanted to make clear oh, that okay. I, I was referencing the one from the original series, not the one in the Kenobi, because she's right. a little girl. Oh yeah, no. When we That's first what I meet, meant by that. when we yeah. first meet Leia, or when the Han and Leia first, or Han and Luke first meet Leia, you know this woman's a force to be reckoned with. You know that you know she's not there to be the damsel in distress. She's there because. Yeah, she's there. Yeah, yeah, you're right. I mean, she was a princess, so I mean, she was strong. She's a strong character. Yeah, I mean, they didn't, you know. You're right. But when you got to episode one, that I mean, she was a Mary Sue. I mean, she had no training, but yet she was able to act like a Jedi all right off the bat and use equipment that she's never used before. Whoa, 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 whoa! Who, wait, wait, who, who are we talking about? The character from the when they did episode one and three that uh, what was her name? Uh, well, okay, but in in uh, Star I mean, Wars, not, right? Yeah, maybe okay, it was not not one through three, but the but the eight through nine. Oh, okay. Well, there we go. The Force Awakens. We can have a, a conversation about that on another one. So, no, yes. I'm just, I'm, but I'm just saying. Yeah. The Ray I, mean, I know what I know what you mean by the Mary Sue, but sometimes, yes. you, I mean, when you have someone, I mean, I, I I mean, look how long it took Luke to, you know, Luke was still not having full power when he when we ended when in his in, at the end of episode what episode you know six after you know the Empire strikes out, you know, or no, the Jedi returns. That's right, but you know, still he took him three movies. To become a Jedi. Yeah. And he had a still struggle. So, I mean, they just rushed the... What was her name? Ray? Was that her name? Ray. Yes, it was Ray. And, 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 so, and I mean, were... it seemed like they just all of a sudden, look, let's just push this along and not give her time to develop, I felt. Uh, but that's just me. I mean, even, for, even if it was a... Uh, even if they had a male character, I'd still say it was a Mary Jo. And so, you know... Or whatever you would call it. Oh, that's that. interesting. The Mary Jo. I hadn't heard that one yet. Well, I just made that up. I don't know what it's called. I oh, just okay. Maybe maybe it's maybe it's Jimmy John. I don't know. But you know, it's I'm just saying you know a sandwich place. What? It's Jimmy John's. I think so. I just I, they make subs, don't they? Yeah, I'm just throwing shit out like there. In I have the no clue southern Midwest. Doing. I'm just throwing shit out there to see if it sticks. But I'm just saying, even if it was a male character, I'd still say that I would say the same thing because we don't have, you know, it's just like, okay, I'm a Jedi right now. You know, it's like, come on, it's, let's not rush this. I, you know, we, we have time, you have three movies to get this going. But, you know, I know we're talking, we're, we're, we're way off base, and I'm sorry for that. Uh, well, I was the one that took us there. So I just wanted to make that clear. And 
Uh, otherwise, I was going to forget it. And the reason is because in this story, these characters are real and they're well written. We learn quite a bit about what's going on. Look, number one, she's actually a little impatient with Pike because he says, you know, uh, I need you to go down there. He says, why? You know, it's, well, because of your ability to do this, this. Oh, no, because I'm going to go down there and crack some, you know, crack the whip. He says, well, yeah, what you're good at. It, it was kind of cool. Uh, that will that that interplay between the captain and number one will come back a little bit later when the engineer and number one have that conversation, which was, I thought, good. Yeah, but, but this, I mean, yeah, this number one doesn't take any crap, though, just like the original series with the cage. I mean, that one, she was stoic and, you know, she was, you know, that number one was also a strong character. Yes, and we know why, that's why she that's why, knew, that's why she had to be replaced later on because, you know, the network didn't like a strong female character being the second in command. Well, yeah, there were two reasons. Number one, yeah. Well, that was, was the first that was strong... one, too, though. So I mean, Yeah, and then the second one was, um, can you remove the creator's girlfriend? <laughs> that's, that's what it was, but that's neither were here nor there. Were they seeing each other that, back, that, that, that quick? Oh, dude, that's why they got, that's why they wrote her out. Okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm just saying, anyway, it's one of, uh, well, I didn't know that. I, I, I thought it was, anyway. I don't oh, know. no, it was. It, it was. It was those two reasons. Okay, well, I didn't know that. I, I knew the first one. Yeah. So, no, it's cool, then, but it's you know, all right. You know, there were things you still couldn't do in the 60s. I, I think yeah. it's funny that um, from the cage and uh, menagerie, the, the quote of, I'm sorry, I still can't get used to having a woman on the fridge. And now he's got four of them. <laughs> Yeah. Well, yeah. I and you know what? I think that's that's how we got off a of topic on that one. It, it doesn't yeah. matter, in my opinion. Look, Catherine Janeway, she's going to go down as one of my favorite characters. She was good at it, and seeing a female captain, forgive me, I was down with it. <laughs> and they got a wonderful woman. Did you guys know that uh, Linda Hamilton was in line for that one? Oh, that's right, Elizabeth. Yes, he had two of them. That little but, rat. But, that's right. you, you repeat that. He had O'Hora and uh, uh, Nurse Chapel. They were yeah, his girlfriends at the same was, time. Yeah, he, but no, I'm yeah. going back further. You were, you were saying something about Linda Hamilton. Oh, that Linda Hamilton was in line for um, the captain of uh, Voyager. And uh, the captain, I forget her name, from Starship Troopers. She was in line for Voyager as well, as was actually there. Um, Erica Benteen in the DS9 episode, who captained the Lakota. She was also in line. There were a lot of women that were in line for Voyager, and it was cool. Well, there was but, one captain. I know what you're saying, but they did, have, they did have a female captain, and she was a movie actress. And I remember her, she was in a movie with Clint Eastwood. And uh, yeah, she was also in the Andromeda strain. What's her face? But any, yeah, yeah. But I'm just saying she could not handle the, the rigors daily. of television. Yeah. So they had, that's why she was, that's when they replaced the actress because yeah. she couldn't. I mean, she's a good actress, but for some reason she couldn't do the, you know, it's a tough schedule doing an hour show, especially, you know. She's used to filming two pages a day. Whereas you film eight to ten, yeah, that's yeah, that's, true there. Story. That's, that's true story. So she she had some problems there, but that's that's neither here nor there. We got a good captain anyway. So I, I keep thinking, very... I keep thinking with because I, I try you know, since I've seen her, I've kind of, I've, I've trying to imagine her as the captain. Like how would she actually act? Like, you know, trying to be the captain. I mean, you know. Yeah. Anyway, once again, there's all, a lot of videos oh, of that on YouTube. By the way, they finally let them out. No, oh, of her trying of, of, of uh, her yeah. doing some of the episodes. I didn't know that. Yeah, she is. I'll, I'll, God, I have them. I'll send them over to you in a little bit. But anyway, we get to the very end. Ohura hears voices and she sees Hammer. And then we go straight to the intro. We're in Act One. We're in Sick Bay. Ohura's being examined. And, uh, you know, hey, they come up pretty quickly and they, they figure it's deuterium poisoning. So, 
they know what it is. They know how it is. And she's suffering from all the symptoms. And, um, you know, she gets assigned off duty. They figured it out real quick, which was kind of cool. However it happened, she got it. And she got it because she was in engineering, right? Because she was redoing the array. Yeah, that's what they, that's what they claim. Yeah. Me, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to ask a question here. How many doctors are on that enterprise? Well, if Actual we go doctor. by there, if the way I understand it, there are three doctors for each okay. shift. There's a minimum of, of one per shift. Okay. But because on the next generation, you had Dr. Crusher, and then we had Dr. Salar, who was mentioned in an episode. And yeah, hardcore, Greg. And I think there might have been another doctor, but at the very least, we know there's two. But if you think about it, the way they operate, there's three shifts, three doctors. Okay. But on TOS, there's only one doctor for 400 people. They did, actually, Dr. Menga was introduced on TOS. He was he was he was the only other doctor shown on the Enterprise, but he was introduced on TOS. Yeah, well, yeah, but I'm just still saying Bones was the main doctor. He was. Even if you uh, have one per shift, you're still a one doctor per shift on 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 Enterprise D with a thousand people. I think Discovery is the only show where they've had two, other than the main character that was the doctor, but they've had another recurring character that was a, a doctor doctor yeah. on the ship. Well, I'm just asking the question because it always seems like, okay, there's one doctor or at least one. And I keep thinking there's like hundreds of people on these ships and only one doctor. But anyway, that, I, I, it's, I mess, we're still getting off. I'm going off again. But I, 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 yeah. I, it, well, it, but I think it's out. the economy of a TV show. <laughs> yeah. And well, check this out. Well, I know, but still they could still say somebody's name, but I, it's still something I wondered about. You know, because, you know, you would think on a spaceship they would have more than one. I don't know. But here, look, check this out. On a Navy submarine, a boomer, there are no doctors. That surprised me. There's no surgeons, no doctors. So um, go figure. But on ships, an aircraft carrier, I'd like to know how many there are. There's about 5,000 people aboard. There can't just be three. I don't think. <laughs> well, my grandfather was the CMO on a um, troop transport during the Second World War. But he oh, was a really? Campus. Yeah, he was. Huh? And, but because of you know his rank um, as a reserve, you know, he was commissioned. Um, he was he was CMO, and but he was he was the dentist for the troop transport. And yes, they had a medical staff because they were a troop transport. Hey, look! If he was a dentist, he could sew up wounds. Made him qualified, yes. <laughs> no doubt. All well, right. Def definitely he was checking teeth. Yeah, no <laughs> doubt about that. So continuing in Act 1, number 1 takes over the operation, which is a refinery, and she makes her feelings known on underlying issues. They get into it. Number 1 and the engineer. What is her name again, Greg? Pelia. Pelia, yes, thank you. They get into it. And there, there's, there's not a meeting of the minds there. And at the very end, I Definitely love it when she sure. says, I, I, Commander. Oh, yes, yes. It was so obvious. It, it was. She, I've done that. I'm like, yes, sir, boss. You know, it's the tone. They know. They know when you're telling them off. And uh, it was good. I did appreciate that exchange because it was real. I've been a part of those. I actually felt like number one when Pike said, I need you to go over there. It's because in my professional career, I have been moved into many offices to clean up operations. And then I move on to another office. I've done that regularly my entire life. That is my job. I go in, set the place straight or right and then go on to another trouble spot. That's what I've done. So I felt like number one in that one. So when the engineer was giving me attitude, um, I was like, well, you know what? Yeah, I I may not outrank you, but I have more experience. And I'm the one that was given this job. So you want to dance? <laughs> I mean, how do you want to do it? I mean, who, 
I've actually told people, this is an aside. Okay. <laughs> people have given me attitude on the phone. They have. Oh, thank you, Elizabeth. We'll get to that right now. Yeah, a corpsman. Yes, a corpsman on the submarine. Yep, one corpsman per 150. You can see that. Elizabeth had a comment. Uh, there's one MD per 1,200 crew. There you go. So, yeah. Um, I was on the phone. Guy was giving me attitude. And uh, he said, what's your name? I already told you my name. If you're not smart enough to remember it, I'm not going to bother to tell you again. But let me tell you, I don't appreciate your attitude. We're on the same team, aren't we? So why are, why do you have an attitude? He says, oh, well, I'm going to have to have a conversation with your boss. I said, well, sir, I'm sitting in front of my computer. And chances are I'm a quicker typer than you are. And the one thing I've learned in my job is first one that snitches win. And I told him that on the phone. I said, and in this conversation you and I have had, I'm already done with the email. Are you going to be a dick about it? Or are you going to be a team player? What do you want to be? Unfortunately, I've learned he who snitches first wins. But that's neither here nor there. Don't, yes, Greg. You don't cross that guy. You do not cross this guy. <laughs> um, well, I, I learned a hard lesson one time where someone said something about me and I learned how the game was played. And when I'm, but sir, you have to, oh, no, no, this isn't a conversation, Roger. Oh, okay. Got the lesson. I got it. I learned that lesson and I never did. And I, I would tell people straight up, I said, dude, why the attitude? We're on the same team, aren't we? So anyway, I've, I, I have felt that interplay between number one and Pelia where it's like, look, we're here for a reason. Let's work it through. Get it done. And um, yeah, I, I did appreciate it. It felt real to me. I don't know what your thoughts were on that, guys, but I love that interchange between Pelia and I did number too. one. I did too. I, to me, it's like, okay, they're getting a little silly, they're getting a little goofy, but this was the balance of the goofy that earlier episodes had had. That's nice. It's warm. It gives the characters a report. I mean, Carol Kane is, anytime she's on screen, you expect humor. Um, so, I mean, even though, you know, the assert, you know, the acerbic comment was there, you know, a younger chief probably would have been severely reprimanded, you know, um, I, I, I got a kick out of like, you know, like number one didn't even miss a beat. The minute Pelia insisted that she you know, number one, tell her what their problem was with her. <laughs> she just went, boom, <laughs> everything came out. And including crumbs on her uniform. What did you eat? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I thought that was amusing. And, but not over the, you know, not over the top and not over the top goofiness. It was a smile. Oh, excuse me. It was a smile. You know, and this episode needed a few smiles. Yeah. Look, obviously the episode at this point is still moving forward and it's moving very well. Um, right after that, Ohora, she's trying to sleep. She's tossing and turning, obviously having problems. And then right away, smoke and sounds. And a lot of stuff is going on. And then she wakes up. Okay, but the imagery that she was getting was pretty bad. I don't think this is where she saw Hammer, right? No, she just saw the that, smoke. That's a little bit later. Yeah, but that's, that's, what we see. Bit, that's, yeah. Our, that's like, you know, the first teaser where she sees smoke and stuff. And we're trying to figure out what. The, oh, that's the, right. That's right. She's on a planet and she's looking off in the distance. And it's like there's a foresty area. Yep. And there's smoke. There's smoke. Well, we actually no, we actually got zombie hammer just before the opening credits. Well, that was in the air the the, the turbo lift though, right? Yeah. So yeah, that oh, was we well, she saw that first, but you know, but then now that she gets another, but this time she gets a dream, not just a vision of a zom of the zombie from The Walking Dead. Yeah. All right, I did miss that, but all right, fair enough. 
right after that, then we see Kirk coming aboard the ship. Uh, the tour that ends in a bar. That's all he cares about. He comments about it. And then we know that his brother, George, is, uh, his expertise is Xeno anthropology. And, he's, and Kirk's like, what? Says, Dude, you, everything is part of Xeno anthropology. I was like, well, okay, yeah, all right. But and George, then they start. But still, but still, George or Sam knew that. Well, I, I explained it to you. But you're not going to listen, so let's talk about you. So he knew that, you know, he had that, you know, Kirk, he had to talk about Kirk. That's all Kirk wants to do. And that's kind of shows the first rub, a, a little bit of a rub there. Yeah, they definitely, definitely established the narcissist in, in Jim Kirk there. Oh, good God, yes. I mean, he had it. There's no doubt. Of course he did. He, he's the youngest, as George tells him. Wow. Youngest first officer of Farragut. And first in this, first in that, he goes through the litany. It's obvious that George is jealous because Kirk does give him attitude. He does. He does look down on him. And he loves his brother. But he says, well, you're the one that went science, right? Well, he tells him also, you know, he also tells him, like, well, you have to have the confidence. You have to work for it. I mean, he was really chastising Sam about why, well, you know, you've got to do this. Like, you know, I went after it, you know. You know, he kind of was, you know, defending what he, how he got to where he was, and like almost making Sam look like a slacker. Yeah, which yeah. Was, I thought not very fair. Um, like uh, Kirk said, you know, he was wallowing on the uh, wallowing in a science lab, and you know, it's like I don't know. Um, I think the writers were like really pushing it to show friction between these two brothers. Um, they kind of pulled themselves back later when, you know, Sam quipped, well, which one of us is on the flagship? Um, but, yeah. um, the, you know. Yeah. And that's probably a little bit of foreshadowing too. Yeah. To be, <coughs> yep. to be the guy responsible for learning about new life on the flagship of you know on its first you know deep space uh, one of its deep space missions going out you know to find new life and new civilizations yeah i i you know i could see why sam might think i mean the whole you know lord of the rings thing between um the two brothers uh De huh. denethor's sons um from Boromir and Aramir. Thank you. Um, Aomir. Sorry. Uh, the, um, you know, the one brother that seems more su su successful is always going to be perceived as casting a shadow over the, over the younger one. So the younger, or the other, the other is always going to be catching up. Not so younger, but he's always going to be catching up. Yeah. And it's interesting because George is older, right? I, I well, would he be older since sure. he was named after the father? Yeah, yeah. yeah actually, he is older. Established that a few times. Yeah, because we 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 learned that in the J.J. Abrams movie, where the older brother, because he's yeah, George is walking away, and George passes him up in the car, so he was older, but that's okay. Um, I think it was this part of the conversation where uh, I, I think it's where George says that, are you guys are going to help me out? His dad has an opinion on who is, you know, good at what they do. Right. Right. They, he does bring that up. He, you know, he, like a competition that the father is, you know, well, I know he favors you or whatever, like you, like you were talking about it. Uh, and, and that that was you know it's it's interesting that they get into it right away when they sit down too. I think I don't know which one of you said they were trying to rush it. Maybe Greg said that or you said that, but it seemed like they tried. They were just rushing right into it. There was no cordial conversation. I mean, they don't see each other that much, and you would think that they would at least take the time out to be cordial for a little while before they got into this. Well, you know, you don't want to hear about this. We'll just talk about you, and then go into this whole thing i mean but still 
I guess they had, like, but still, it kind of worked if, if you want to say it was forced. But it, but it depends how much uh, George, you know, has, uh, you know, has a grudge against Kirk, too. I mean, you know, that might just come out because you know he's, it's always on his mind, you know, in the back of his head, knowing that his father, you know, has this competition thing going favors Kirk, even though he's the oldest. So it met, you know, I mean, it's a well, we, I, I don't know if you have a sibling, you know about a sibling rivalry, and you don't know. Sometimes it's not. Sometimes it's a good rivalry. Sometimes it's just a mean son of a bitch, and you don't know, and you go right into it because you push those buttons. Yeah. Um. When when he goes to the litany, he says first of this, and you know you're the youngest first officer. Of this one, you know who had that record? It was Dad, and all that stuff. So. Yeah, it, it just adds to it, and it's Sam is yeah, one that following in the footsteps of, of the father, and you know, and so I mean, and and like you said, George is in the sciences, so he's not going to be a first officer. He's going to be he could be the head yeah. of the department, or whatever. But anyway, go ahead, Raj. No, it's all good. So we clearly established he's jealous. Now we did hear in a prior episode that George, when he talked about James, he said, well, he can be a little difficult to work with. So we did get a little bit of that prior to this, which was interesting. Was this also so, the scene, too, where Chapel and Spock were playing chess? Um, Close. It was okay, it, right after that. So okay. um, after George storms out, we go back to the refinery. And number one, has stabilized everything, but apparently it's not going. And then she gets into it with Pelia again. Yeah, yeah. And then she says, "Well, had I followed your meticulous orders, I would have missed this." She goes, "What? What did you miss? Sabotage." And that is where that little exchange happened. She obviously disobeyed orders, but she said, "Had I followed your orders, I would have had time to look for this." So. After that, then we immediately switch to another scene, Spock versus Chapel. They're playing okay, chess. Yeah, I knew it was close. And this whole thing of them playing chess, it was a metaphor for a relationship. Where Spock says, your move. And it was said in such a way that it felt like they were almost flirting. Did you get that vibe, Greg? Um, yeah. So the... You know, the whole thing was, you know, it's like, you know, she, she's sitting there not knowing what her, you know, what, what her next move is going to be. But we well, I, th I, know. Well, I think Spock, a, be, I think Spock is being sarcastic and kind of mean. I don't know if it's a flirt because he goes, your move. And she just sit there. And I don't, I think she might, now that we're talking about it, she might've been doing that on purpose just to frustrate him. It's very because possible. She was, because she was always making the proper counter move, but. She would just wait there and because she knew it would. And I, maybe that's the relation thing you're talking about there, Roger, because she's just fucking with, I mean, playing around with him, you know, you know, she knows that if she takes his time, he's because he's ready to make his move. And she's like, I'm going to sit here and just screw with it a little bit. So maybe, maybe you are right about, maybe that's the part of it. I don't well, know. I don't know if I got flirting from it, but maybe. But well, I mean, they. Cool. Their whole and in, in relationship has been a flirt, but I don't want to, you know, simplify it that way. Spock does bring it up that they're in a relationship because he says we have to notify Starfleet because there are rules against this, and she actually is like, "What are you talking about, you psycho?" I mean, she doesn't say psycho, but she says, "Look, for humans, it's either you're in a relationship or you're not." So it's a little difficult to understand. And she she even says a metaphor for whatever this is. It's like it's it's in a box. I don't know if she said Pandora's box. And it's like That'd are you Schrodinger? Schrodinger's cat. She did, <laughs> didn't they? Or they did say that, right? Yeah, the the paradox of the, the quantum paradox of Schrodinger's cat, which you know Spock of course had the uh his scientific plausibility of that's not how the quantum entanglement stuff works, but um, so, yes. he, so, so Spock is pop is Spock kind of like taking this relationship a little bit more seriously than Chapel because Chapel, like, like you were saying, she's like, What? 
because you know they've established the cat chapel doesn't like committed relationships um they've but the spock the knows that. likes these casual encounters yes does spock know that though mm. yeah because that was wasn't that brought up of, like earlier like say what if I, finds out that you know you have all these relationships going on but uh it, it's it's hard to say because i mean the, the, the episode where she basically dumped the guy that wrote poetry um <laughs> was you know they were all kind of like the, in the same place at the same time so i i i would say probably not all right so thinking about it live here oh um, it goes back i'm sorry greg it goes back to the previous episode when spock was human and chapel was trying to get him fixed and she had a hard time admitting what kind of relationship they had remember when you he, she was yes. talking to that entity and she goes, well, what's this? What, how, what is he? And fine. Well, just tell him. Cause you know, cause she was afraid to commit to like, well, he's my whatever friend or boyfriend or whatever, because they were caretaker. To, yeah. Caretaker. And she was like, she wasn't ready to admit it, you know? So it makes, anyway, go ahead. I'm no, but, no, you're, you're, you're right. I, I, I had to think about it. I don't think Spock, knows that chapel's kind of a swinger um, <laughs> um but, it but seems i also like think that Chapel, yeah I, I i like i got the same impression that roger had that it, this whole thing was a metaphor you know that you know i don't think this is the first time they talked about disclosing the relationship to you know to to Pike or to Starfleet, I think you know. Well, it seems like was... Chapel was pretty surprised by it, though. Oh yeah, it was clearly. I mean, look, Spock is still a Law and Order kind of guy. He, he knows it better than most, and he says, "Hey, we're doing something here." And there's that, you know, officer thing, higher rank and stuff. And she's like, "No, no, don't shut up, shut up." I, but, I thought it was but real. The thing is, if if, if Spock is a higher ranking. Person is Chapel's a not to be sexual harassment. Chapel's in Starfleet, but she is not an officer. She's non com. She's at yeah. the dock. She's a nurse. I mean, just yeah. a nurse. But isn't she have some kind of rank? Okay, well, I believe a doctor does hold a rank. Yes. Because uh, she's still just even in, in in the in the in the military, a doctor can be it would be like a colonel or something because they're a doctor. I think right. What was Pierce well, and uh, they were and captains? Hawkeye, was Hawkeye in, in MASH? He was an officer, they, they were captains. Yep, see, so yeah, yeah. Um, in the case, my grandfather sure have a ring, a lieutenant too? commander. Um, the um, yeah, I'm pretty sure they established that Chapel is a, a civilian for the most part, really. Okay. Um, she, her. Insignia is the Red Cross, not the sciences. Right. Right. Um, Which Mbengas is too. What was, what was the rank of Hot Lips? Major Houlihan. See? So she was a major. But you're saying since yeah. she's but you're saying since she has this kind of red if cross. She was also wow, armed. majors majors higher up than captain. Yeah. She was also army. She wasn't she wasn't there as a reservist. She was army army. Yeah. And still, I, I mean, I, I know we're getting really off track here, but I'm just trying to figure out if she had, a, if she has a rank or not. And you're just saying she's a civilian because she had that red cross, or not a a badge or whatever. Is what you're trying to say? Mcually, well, I've always taken this logo. I didn't realize Mbega had the. Yeah, does actually, all rank? medical does too. So, so does McCoy. They they've always had that. Had what? Because they're they're in medical. They're in medicine. No, I got. All right, maybe I did jump into forces. I gotta go back and double check that one. Well, I remember, guys, we're 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 talking about a TV show insignia. Okay, just keep that in mind. <laughs> okay, keep that in mind. It's not a TV show. <laughs> it was oh. created by G by Gene Roddenberry. It, it's 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 real. It's real. All of it's real. A TV show. <laughs> Galaxy Quest proved that. Yeah. Yes. Now, I, what was I really like cool? Oh, I didn't like oh, that. Oh, hell, I've, well, I think we all do. We're all fans. Right after that, Ohura comes in. 
And boy, does that woman use precise logic. It was great. Where she quotes Spock's forebearer yeah. and says, well, you know, in the most obvious thing, the most simplest explanation should be appropriate. And then both Chapel and her destroyed her logic <laughs> with a higher level logic, which was crazy. Isn't she called Commander in the original Star Trek? Um, I don't recall. Well, Not until the film. So what I understand is that when uh, the original Uhura wanted to quit, uh, Martin Luther King said, don't quit because you're a fourth in command. Now, I don't know if that's true or not, but that's what I always heard because she wanted to quit the show because all she was doing was... Well, I, I think he, in addition to that, he said, look, you are an officer, you are a woman, and there was another item. There were three things. He said, they see you as no one sees us. So yeah, yeah I've I, heard, I I've heard her say that in Austin Corner she was fourth in command. And I kept thinking Oh, actually, mean? and that she was a minority. Duh. Oh, well, yeah, that's that what he says that she was black. But I don't know. If Not she only was that, you're a woman, command. you're an officer, and you're black, and you're on the bridge. And people see us as they don't as they don't get a chance to. You must remain. It was something like that. Yeah, and when I had the chance yeah, like to have said, a conversation with, and he talked to her, he told her, you know, don't do this because blah, you know. Yeah. You might not be doing much, but you're still representing, you know, like you just said, Roger. He's representing. Um, right. Yes, yes, yes. No, that, that's who we thought you meant. Um, I, I, I don't know. I, I don't recall them ever calling her commander. But that's I'm just a good question. What, what I'm saying is that I think, <laughs> you know, in interviews or whatever, that's what she, she said. He said to her that she was fourth in command. But I don't know if he actually knew how this ranking thing worked, but. That's what she said, or I've read that she's. But I heard her say that in interviews before. But I, I don't know. I'm just. She thought she said, and maybe that's. I, I, I've maybe. heard. I've heard that as well, Roger. That yeah, it was. That, um. Although I don't know as if we ever saw her have the con. But. No, because usually, if if anything it came down worse, it was Sulu who had the con. Yeah, well, yeah, we know was, Scotty, well, Scotty was third in command, as, as we know, yes. because he would take the bridge sometimes. But didn't one time Sulu take the bridge uh, in the TOS, or was or that just later? I keep thinking he had the bridge once, and he was trying to make. Or maybe I'm wrong about that. I I thought he did. I, I thought he did, but uh, but still, we'll it was but still it was a minority on being in command of a ship. Yes. Yeah. Now, in in that scene, of course. Chapel while well, Spock uses logic and says, Well, no, actually, this is this. And then Chapel says, Look, this is a textbook case of overwork and exhaustion. So Aurora's like, Fine, all right, whatever. Then she goes to the bar and she orders sorry and brandy. And then here we have first contact. Oh, I'm sorry, Kirk contact, where he comes <laughs> on over. And I did not think that he was hitting on her. I, didn't I yeah, I didn't get that. Did you get that, Richard? No, I just I got that this was just a woman overreacting as some women do. <laughs> I know that's very sexist, but but you know, and plus it could be still part of her exhaustion. But usually when a guy starts coming up and talking to a woman, a woman just automatically would think that I mean, why not? Because it happens all the time, right? I mean, yeah, but what wasn't his response? Is oh, you're friends with Sam, so I'm sure Sam has informed everyone he, he knows. Of uh, it's, it's possible because she says several times, Look, I'm not, and he said, Look, I just thought you needed a friend right now. She's like, I'm not looking for anything right now. I am not, I'm not. And <laughs> yeah. I loved her line where she says, I'm not in the market for friends right now. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, and it was a it was a double entendre. Yeah, I'm not in the market for friends, James. Yeah. She she shut she completely shut him down. Yeah. Even though he wasn't hitting on her, he she still shut him down. 
And then she makes her way out. She hears the voices again. And she, it's not real. It's not real. And then she sees herself. And they get into a scrum. And she knocks herself out. <laughs> and then she comes to the floor. And he's, what the hell? <laughs> He said, I told you I'm not hitting on you. <laughs> that was kind of funny. It, so. So this was, yeah, this was another, like, nice smile moment in a very serious, creepy situation. Uh, you know, um, but one of the things I noticed here, so I've been watching the shows with the headphones connected to the TV, and... You, Unless you have surround sound or headphones, you wouldn't have noticed this. That little creepy, st uh, chattery communication noise when she's getting the telepathic communication, it's like swirls around in, in the surround sound. And it is really cool. So at, at first, the, like the second or third, second time, I thought I was imagining it. But this scene, I listened for it. And sure enough, they, they were thinking about this when they were creating those sounds. Yeah, oh, wow. <laughs> you know what? I, 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 Forgive me, folks. I'm in my bedroom, and I saw it here on the TV that I have in here. I, I it's, it's a smaller TV. It's only a 30-some inch. So, no. The Not one right. in my office, right. that's the 40-some, and that one has the 1080p. And so, I didn't catch it here. Very good. And I, and I oh. Well, if you can connect I'm, I'm Bluetooth a, to it. Listen to it with headphones on. Even yeah. even just one of those scenes, because that was pretty. Well, the one of the longer ones, because that was really. I cool. know what you're talking about because I have felt that and heard that in the movie theater. I know what you're talking about when you can hear the sound start way over there and come around. I mean, that is the digital sounds. That is amazing how they can do that. I I know engineers in the digital world are like that's yeah, not I'm like all right, whatever. You know, and that's you still, and that's the still another cost home. that Greg was talking about putting a lot of putting money into the show because these sound effects have to cost money too to get that sound that surround sound that Greg was talking about. Yeah. Well, they can do a lot of that in the computer now, but yeah, yeah, you know, they can. But still, they have to do things to it. I mean, we come well, up they have to that. come up with it. They have to yeah. make it to begin with. Yeah, that's so true. The I Foley mean, artists now have a, have the challenges on these. Yeah, so I mean, yeah, noses. but but anyway, she breaks his nose. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and, oh. the thing is, and the first thing, oh, okay. Happens, okay. Forgive me a moment. Elizabeth says, "Shame on you, Roger. You're always supposed to have larger equipment in the bedroom, young lady. You are 100% <laughs> right. But the reality is, I'm alone in my room now. This is the morgue. So yes, it is what it is." But thank you, Elizabeth. I appreciate that. Um, I failed. That's why I have all the tools out in my office where I... Okay. This happened one time. But like I Greg a... said, it's, a, it's another smile moment because Kirk doesn't go ballistic at you. He just said a superior officer. I want to drag, you know. He's like, you know, he doesn't take it. I mean, it is a serious offense of hitting a superior officer, but he's not going ballistic. He's kind of like, oh, you know, he's like, I told you I'm not hitting on you. And that was, it was a good moment. I mean, that was also a moment where, you know, he didn't overreact, which probably helped Yohora not get too freaked out. Well, right away, the act ends. We go into the second act. And her first words, I'm so sorry. And uh, he, they start to have a conversation. And he says, your visions are turning you into a sadist. So <laughs> yeah. Um, and then that's where Kirk says, look, Neota, well, he doesn't say Neota, but he says, I get it. I've had deuterium poisoning myself. So it's, it's, there's an understanding by Kirk. He says, but I've never punched a superior officer. <laughs> yeah. It would have been perfect at a had a whole horror in her desperation would have said, I'm sorry. I, I punched a higher rank, but anyway, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I would have, but she was stressed out. She doesn't have that sense of humor. And he says, point is, I'm an excellent judge of character. I believe you. Just don't punch any more officers till I give back. And that's where I skipped over the moment where he says, look, 
can I have act can I have permission to access your file? I'm gonna go over and see my CMO on my ship and we'll get back to you. And then she's okay, fine, yes. And he said, just don't punch anyone until I get back. And then what we I have don't a... understand is why he had to take it over to the ship instead of just send it over. Because the writer said you had to. So Yeah, I well, true story, but still what I mean, I, I it still seems like they always send anyway, it doesn't matter. I just didn't understand why he, he happened to be going back to report back to the captain on why the reason he was there to begin with. Or Oh, oh, I actually forgot. Oh. If we can back up on that same scene. He gave him an excuse says, to exit the set. Okay. Yeah. He says, Look, you better go away because I'm gonna go to sick bay. Is that you I don't want to have you get charged? And she goes, I have a dermal regenerator in my corner. I'm like, what? <laughs> I mean, convenient. look. Wow, oh, she, yeah. She's the dermal fixing regenerator. Her, you know, she's fixing stuff up in the you know, the antenna control thingy. Um and you know, on her own. So why not? Yeah, yeah. Well, remember in DS9, Bashir said, gentlemen. If you break an elbow and arm or something, you're going to wish we had a dermal regenerator on this ship. So mm -hmm. if the DS9 uh, Defiant doesn't have one, how did Ohura have one in their quarters? But that's neither here nor there. Because it's so. the flagship. That's right. I forgot, Captain. You're so right. So then... Or maybe we... she just smuggled it. Maybe she just got it on her own. I don't know. Or maybe she uses it to fix her wrinkles. I don't know. Who knows? I oh, mean, that's right. Maybe exactly she uses it, uses it for some cosmetic purposes. I don't know. You know how vain. I'm not going to say that. Uh, so, well, Kirk does say she's a sadist, so I guess she's into that stuff. Yep. And then she fixes his nose or tries, you know, and he's complaining. Up, she's, yeah. I like that line. She says, stop being a baby. <laughs> that was my yeah. favorite line when she was fixing his nose. Oh, um, thank you, sir. Um, why am I in the dark? That's the story of my life. He's always in the dark, big dog. You know that. Oh, okay. Understood. <laughs> yeah. All right. Fair enough. We'll, we'll see if we can keep it uh, good. So, look. Um, right away, we switch to the station. They're searching for proof of sabotage. And then they find the Starfleet crewman. And he's saying, it can't be real. It can't be real. And it's Lieutenant Ramon. And they arrest him for sabotage. That's crazy. Okay. So uh, Greg had to step away for just a moment. Uh, hopefully he'll be joining us in a bit. But they find out that this guy is doing some bad stuff. And then we get back where Pike, is it Pike? Because Kirk and Ohora get, uh, get together and then uh, Ohora says, the irony is not lost on me, where the the person who can communicate cannot communicate her problems. Right. So who was the other person that was in there? I guess it was Pike, was it? Did they go to Pike after they fixed his nose? Well, because remember, Kirk went back to his ship. Oh, that's true. Yeah, that's true. And then, oh, actually, they arrest what's his face, right. and then we have the red alert. I apologize, I skipped over that. There's the delusion of the attack and the death of the bridge crew. And then Pike says to Ensign O'Hora, Aren't you on medical leave? So, yeah, it was Pike. And then Kirk comes over, and the three of them, because right, Pike is talking to O'Hora, and O'Hora is saying, Well, hey, look, I find the, I, you know, it's, I, I get the irony. You know, that the one that communicate cannot communicate her problems. So I think that's where uh, Kirk explains as to him as to what's going on, right? Yeah, because they aren't they in the, are they still on the bridge or the ready room when they do this? They were in his room. His room right after right. that, they go to sick bay. Yeah. When, when they went to sick bay. Pike believes her too, right? Pike, Pike Yes. Believes. Well, yeah, I, I, I believe he does. Yeah, I, I thought so. I, I forget that conversation. But Mbenga declares the patient has significant damage to brain, speech pattern, and stuff like that. And then what happens? The lieutenant escapes. 
and Ahura blabs, this isn't real. And uh, Kirk ends up correcting her saying, it is. It is very real. It is very real. And that's mm -hmm. how we end Act 3. We go into Act and 3. Did he know things about her so he could prove that it was real? Well, remember, he mentions to her that he's had deuterium poisoning. So yeah. Yeah, he does understand that. Yeah, so yeah, you're right. Act three begins. There's a corridor search. He called for security, and then emergency lighting is activated because they lose some power. And they find that the crewman has been sliced outside of astrometrics. I thought that was Scarlett Johansson right there because she was dead, you know, because it's lost in translation, but apparently not. And I was like, oh, man. Well, anyway. that, would, that, that would have been a good uh, Easter egg if it was Scarlett Johansson. Yeah, it definitely would have been. I guess I am in the dark right now, huh? So, You know, speaking of that, they could have had uh, uh, Bill Murray be the captain of the Farragut. I find it amusing. It, it should have been. You know, it's funny because it's actually kind of light in here. And I'm surprised that there is uh, no light right now. Wow. So what's probably happening is is the sun's setting there. Yeah, and but it's, it's you're very actually light. backlit and the screen, the camera is trying to compensate. Oh, is that what it is? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's still really dark. Yeah, it's very dark. So, sorry about that, folks. I am in darkness. Uh, maybe I'll put the overhead light on right now, so forgive me. Oh, I got to be over here because, yeah, sorry. I'll continue. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Okay, now where, I got where, 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 what, what did I walk in on that after, before the dark left? Sorry, I just wanted to. Uh, you were talking about the sliced. Uh, oh and yeah, and that's when yeah, I just thought that might be Scarlett Johansson because of that lost in translation. Yes, yeah. And then which I point? Said it would have been it would have been cool if Bill Murray was the captain of the Farragut. Then, if you want to do some more lost in translation, that you know, okay, missed opportunities. That was genuinely a missed opportunity. Definitely. Yeah. But still, I probably would have rolled my eyes at it. But... For that, but some hanky panky he did on that one set, though. Is he still in the doghouse? Oh, I don't know. I just Maybe really you know, good, you've seen the movie, dude. I'm, 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 I'm impressed. You've seen Lost in Translation, huh? I like that movie. I saw it a long time. Yeah, I liked it. I, I do I mean, too. I, I'm just saying. Well, anyway, it, yeah. But, yeah, I don't know if he would have done it. You know, he's a very, he just, I don't know. From my understanding, it's hard to get, a, he has a, you have a number where you can call him, but you got to wonder if he's going to call you back or not. From what I understand. I mean, anybody can get right. it. Right, yeah. It's, 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 it's a good movie. So, uh, at that <laughs> moment, La'an joins Pike, and they continue the search, and then Ohura hears it again. They switch to a different scene, and she calls to James. And he's gone. And then he's back. And she decides to go back to sick bay. The crew continue the search. And then La'an and Pike are doing their search. And they see a shadow come around. And sure enough, it is Kirk. And uh, she says, James. And he doesn't respond. Yep. And Pike says, you know each other? So um, I looked at it again. Yeah, and but still, it even if you me know, that Kirk it, knew. But, yeah, but I don't but know. He I mean, he, I he but, but Kirk, well, Kirk is still kind of what's calling me James, but instead of calling him like you would say lieutenant, but you know, I mean, she's yeah. still in that mode. Where also she, knows Jim. she knows Jim, and they almost they had that moment on the planet where they kind of had an intimate moment. Not you know, you know what I mean by that. They didn't do you know kiss or whatever, but you know they. You know, Kirk, that Kirk didn't pass any judgment on her because he didn't know anything about her past. So that, that, that was, she was at ease with him because he didn't have anything to judge her by. 
Yeah. Uh, gentlemen, I need you to continue, please. I will be right back. Okay. You change your change your diaper. Uh, no, he's probably over two for his meds. Well, so. No, uh, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> the, um, what did you think of that, Greg? When that I, I, thought, I thought it was written so that she was taken aback that he was there. And then I thought, well, she's a security officer. She should know that he's on the ship. But yeah, maybe she, then I thought a third time, maybe she didn't expect him to be in that particular location at that particular moment. Right. I mean, you I may think she know was taken back when she yeah, said James. You, you may know somebody's in the building that, but yet you don't expect to run into him. Right. And then right. you're surprised. I mean, like say he's like, well, yeah, I know he's here, but I'm over here in this part of the whatever building. I'm not going to run into that dickhead. But then all of a sudden you show up. Oh, well, what are you doing? You know, but still, it was kind of, an, I, it was kind of, I mean, I think Kirk is still kind of awkward because he's, she's at, he, she acts like she kind of know, you know, like you said, she's like James, like, oh, okay, no, I, I'm a lieutenant. You call me lieutenant. <laughs> right. And later we learn he does remember the conversation because he's like, Yo, oh, yeah, you're the one with the stickler for accurate records. Yeah. Um, I, I think Kirk thinks, or at least this is what I think is the, the intent of the writing and the performances. I think Kirk thinks she reached out to him for romantic reasons, whether not knowing anything about the fact that she did know this other universe, Kirk, I, I think he's like completely confused why this girl is interested in me. Right. But I mean, at this time, I mean, I guess at this time, he still might, he would already have this reputation of being a ladies man. So he's like thinking, Oh yeah, I think I think that's a given, especially because yeah. you know he, he was not really being all that flirty, and her was like, "No, no, no, I know who you are." <laughs> yeah, so yeah, so he's you know, but then again, she's if that that's if that's what he's thinking, she's kind of coming on pretty strong by calling him by his first name, and you know, I mean, she's like, if if you're Kirk, you're like thinking, "Oh, she's ready to go." I mean, if you're a male, I mean, and a woman calls you by your first name. Yeah, and she and doesn't call you I mean, out of nowhere because if she's you're also her, led on that you know, they she doesn't warm up to people very quickly because she's afraid, you know. Yeah, she's, yeah. she's got this wall up all the time. And, and I think, and I think Kurt thinks that whole reason when she called him about being the stickler, I think he thinks that was just an excuse to talk to him. I uh, yeah, I, because, I, I, I mean, think no that, one. You can check that stuff on a screen. You don't have to call his br the brother, you know. Yeah. All that stuff should be right in front of her, right? I mean, if you're a security officer, even if you can get the personnel file right there in front of you and everything, if that's missing, then who's, whose fault is that? <laughs> or, you'd, or you'd send a query to record. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, excuse but me. Still, I'm sorry. But still, getting on, uh, I think... We're getting on uh, pumpkin time here in New England. Yeah. Yeah, yep. but I still, um, I still think Jim is still confused about this, and I think he's very confused at why this girl. Yeah, and she's still, she, I mean, plus she's still kind of awkward when she does this stuff too. I mean, she's not like flirty. She just oh, shames, and it's like she's awkward. Very, yeah, she's awkward. I mean, because she knows she knows a Kirk, but not okay. A she knows she knows, but you know why she's awkward. Because her name. Okay. I'm well, not so saying it's part that. Of that, but still he, I, I understand what you're saying, Roger, and it could be that, but still she still she had feelings for the other Kurt too. So I mean that's and she's trying to she's trying to navigate that between okay, I know this isn't the real Kirk, but still we had our moment. On the on that other timeline, or whatever you want to call it, so I think that's what it is too. And 
I'm sure somewhere down the line she may explain, oh, she can't talk about it. So, I mean, it's always going to be that awkward thing because she can't tell anyone about what happened. Yeah. Well, well that's fair, see, and I agree. It's interesting to see how this plays out as the series goes. Well, that's why we have a change in the timeline, man. This is crazy. This is uh, interesting. Yeah. So we'll see what happens. Now, at that moment, Ohura, we switch to Ohura. She finds blood on the floor and the hatch, and she calls for backup. But backup doesn't arrive quickly enough. She crawls up the Jeffrey's tube, and she tries to reach Lieutenant Ramon, who cannot seem to communicate. And he is doing things, and she's saying, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this. Pull back, please. It's like he seems to understand part of it, but he's obviously driven. Because yeah, I guess but, he... Yeah. What? And I, well, I was trying to figure out, you know, what, 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 what you know, I was trying to figure out what he did with, on the Ramones. Was he, I mean, because, you know, if he was related to the Ramones back in the punk band in the 70s. So, well, the thing is, he doesn't have the voice, so he might have just been the bassist or the. Uh, I'm just, I'm just kidding. But you say, you say well, real, also, he no. didn't have an e at the end of his name. Oh, did he? Yeah, it's just. Maybe he wanted to change his symbol like Prince did to change his name to that little stupid. Thing. But anyway, I'm getting way off kilter. But when you when you say I, Ramon, I wonder what the, the Ramones. Ramones would be with the e at the end. I wonder if it looks like Charles E and C. But what do I know? <laughs> But anyway, <laughs> yeah, anyway, exactly. An attempt at, at, at being humorous. <laughs> so she try. She knows what he's trying to do, and she's trying to stop him. And he gets the best of her, and it looks like it's going to happen. Kirk shows up, and he does what he does. The emergency beam out, and they just did genuinely make it out. And I guess they were up in the nacelles, right, Admiral? Where yeah, where it was going on, and. We saw a pretty neat special effect. The Enterprise was crippled right after that. And that's interesting that we get our first look at the inside of an SL too. I mean, yeah. I mean, we've been inside a Jeffrey's tube, but we or a fallopian tube, but we have not been in, in the nacelle. And and the special the special effect of that was pretty cool too. And and did they have inner ship? beam ups and, and that well, I know it's a TV show but, <laughs> <laughs> but I mean there were certain things they couldn't but anyway it doesn't matter they beamed out they did say uh, an emergency beam out yes yeah, the, so they, they established they no in next generation that that was something relatively new yeah but at that time. It's, it's a TV show well, Scotty Scotty in the original series yes very good Scotty in the original series did say um, intership beaming is dangerous. It's not that accurate. It's all oh, really, it's not that accurate. You're sending all two billion of my molecules wherever, and it's not that accurate. Oh, great. Could you imagine what transport reason, beaming will do then, Scotty? It's, it's accurate if you go on a planet or even go underground, it's accurate, but you can't beam into the next hallway. I don't, it's like, okay, yeah, if you're gonna go beam because down, they down don't into know. the rest of the planet. Yeah, because remember, they themselves don't know yet that even space is what's moving. Remember that? But anyway, that's but anyway, But yet they're beamed out just in time as usual. And then we see the special effect of the, of the explosion, which was cool, even though it caused damage to the ship. Yeah, uh, thank you. Them. We actually just got another like. Thank oh. you. And it's not showing up on my screen. So thank you, Jason. Appreciate it. Um, right after that scene, what were you gonna say, yeah. Greg? You were gonna say, were you gonna say something about that too? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I mean, for people like me, I, I'm glad they paid attention to, you know, even though it always looks like the Jeffrey tubes go up from the main deck, like where the sick bay and everything is. I'm glad that they paid attention to where this room was in relationship to the nacelle strut. Um, you know, and you know. They made a point, you know, of, you know, the, you know, the communication station, you know, was up there because, you know, it's tied to the antennas and everything. So I, I, I kind of was pleased they made a little bit of extra effort for the, for the, the for the techno geeks out here. Um, but one thing I was curious about, and I have to go back 
and rewatch the uh, Enterprise episode when they spend a night on the in the nacelle um, because of some of the shielding protected them from something. Um, yeah, that was an Enterprise. There's a little communication station behind the yard collectors in you know that that forward section of the nacelle. And I, sw- I I know that the box that uh, Ramon was messing with looked really familiar. I don't know if it's that same box, but there's like a little box that was kind of like stood out from the wall a little bit and, and like had like crenellations around, or not crenellations, um, like crinkly indents around it. That looked really familiar. So I got to go back and see if that was the same device that was in the on the communications panel okay huh up in, in yeah. Enterprise. I, I, it i looked again on the second watch of it and it's like hmm, i don't know maybe i should have rewatched enterprise to be sure about that first but I didn't have a lot of <laughs> yeah time. i'm gonna have to look it up myself i'm seeing if i can go back in my youtube history and someone did a uh, original series not necessarily a walkthrough, but they said, where is engineering located on the original Enterprise? And we have a rough idea as to where it is. And someone actually tried to put the torpedo room and engineering in there. And when you look at it, um, it's too big and it's beautiful. Oh, I think it was the torpedo room. It was, yeah, it was a torpedo room. And they say, no, nope, it's because if you look at the ship and we know its exact dimensions someone said the torpedo room as we know it in the Rathacon and all that it doesn't fit it does not fit and it's a great video and i'm gonna see if i can find it and someone was also talking about the engineering set on where does it fit on the original series so when you guys mentioned that i saw the the engineering was at the end of at at the at the back of the saucer section where the where the auxiliary engines are Right, where the impulse engines are. As a matter yeah, the of impulse. Fact. I thought that's where engineering was. Yes. I mean, I looked on um, the on the, those Star Trek Enterprise blueprints that came out years ago, you know. But anyway, I thought that's what it said. That's where en- engineering was. Oh, and I was always I, I always thought engineering was in the bottom of the ship where the nacelles. It should were. be, yeah. And actually, well, it's in both places. That's how well, everybody. Well, that that exi- that's very good. That's what they say. So look. Gentlemen, on YouTube, oh, and everyone in the chat room, on YouTube, the if you look up We Travel By Night, all four words, that is their handle. They have the Enterprise Engine Room Enigma, where was main engineering, and they also have the Torpedo Room Puzzle. How many did the Enterprise have? So it's really good video. And then they talk about the Enterprise dorsal problem, because we know... The intermix chamber goes all the way up to the top. And he says, how did the turbo lift pass through the dorsal? And when you look at the width of the dorsal and the set that we know, how did the turbo lift go through? So it's it's pretty cool stuff. Yes, speaking about engineer, of course, Jay, but you are the one that I respect. But uh, all, once again, it's the TARDIS effect. Ever. Yes. But it's it all right. It is. And I don't think, well, we're going on, what, 50 years ago now? Um, over 50 years ago. I don't think they thought people would, like, nitpick it to that degree. I mean, I don't, you know, I'm glad later they started thinking about this. Um, but, you know, initially they really didn't put a lot of thought into it um, other than a general idea of what things look, where things were on the ship. But but they, um, but they didn't have bathrooms either on that ship, I don't think. Not oh, and saw, we saw a bathroom in this episode, didn't we? Did we see a bathroom? No, Did that you? was the last episode. The Spock went in the bathroom to scream. No toilet. Oh, that's right. Yes. Yes, yeah. we actually yeah. did see that one. Yeah. Oh, and in Lower Decks, we saw the sonic showers. Yes. Yep. Well, we saw a sonic shower in Enterprise, too. We actually saw a real shower in Enterprise. <laughs> we... we we sure did. <laughs> yeah, we hi saw, Jay. We saw we saw the shower in Enterprise, and that was uh, something else. Yeah, no doubt. So, just after all that, 
Pike says we're going to have to investigate the Ramon files. And he says since he's passed away, Starfleet says we can access all that stuff. So he just lets you know that's what we're going to do. Then we switch to another scene where La'an and Kirk are having a conversation. And he says, look, my dad growing up was the type that can pass a stranger in need. And he's helping people who really need it. And he says, yeah, it's funny how the impression that we have as kids. It was kind of a deep conversation between the two of them. And he says, dad helps total strangers over me. So if he's doing that, it must be important. And oh, yeah, he was talking about how he didn't spend any time with his dad because his dad was always off doing Federation stuff. Yeah. So that's where he got the idea. Well, if he's helping people instead of spending time with me, it must be important. So that's where Kurt picked that up as well. Yeah. Yeah, very good. And then they finally decided to just go off. And then he says down the hall, I haven't forgotten about that drink you owe me. So, and she's like, yeah, yeah but you forgot everything else though, dude. But that's neither here nor there. Yeah. <laughs> we switch to the refinery. Number one in the engineer. Jen Riley has a problem with the space hippie. <laughs> <laughs> and she says, and I'm paraphrasing, well, gosh darn it, son of a Wookiee. I've been called so many things, but I've never been called a space hippie before. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of funny. And uh, they they have it out. She says, space hippie is a new one. And they do. And that's where she says, uh, well, has it dawned on you why I've been put in charge? Even though, because she says, she, you know, with all my years in Starfleet, shouldn't you kind of like defer to me a little bit? As well, okay. I outrank you. Why do you think that is? <sighs> that was not a middle finger. That okay, Greg. Very good. That was two middle fingers and the fist. Uh, yeah, that that was rough. <laughs> yes, because uh, she says I outrank you. Why do you think that is? So yeah, then she says I'll have the station online in a few hours. It was, it was a resolute, but also saying, right, yeah, I was thinking that too, Elizabeth. I loved that comment. It reminds me of the Space Hippie from the original. Yes. I loved that it. Had to be space where it came from, Elizabeth. <laughs> that had to be. I mean, yes. we've been calling them Space Hippies for years, but they didn't call them that originally. And so, I mean, they had to pull that in just to, this was like, you know, a less than subtle Easter egg, I think, for us. Yes, that was. The way Pelia answers her, though, it was, I'll have the station online in a few hours. Didn't say sir, didn't say anything, just like, okay. You know, you're going to be a wench about it. All right, I'll move on. That was, uh, that, that was a, it felt real that engagement, even though what's her face went off on her and says, okay, fine. Yeah, whatever. But I outrank you and that's it. So, uh, that was rough. I don't know what your thoughts were on that guys. I think Pelia was after her to be honest. I mean, and still all the way through the following scenes, you know, she was just after her to be honest about what she was feeling. And yeah. at that moment, she, you know, and I mentioned earlier in the show, I mean, she's, you know, you know, tell me, tell me, tell me. And then, like, you know, number one just didn't hold back. <laughs> no. When did you find time to eat? I like that one. Crumbs. <laughs> <laughs> but the, um, you know, um, I think Pelia was like, okay, I'll have it online. You know, I, I think she was just after her to be honest. Yeah, you know, she's no Kynan, even though she's old, very old. Um, but, you know, she's been around. I mean, I would not think she's unwise. I think she has a very quirky nature about her, and I think that's intentional. No, you know, it's like, well, we've got this idea for a character, and we want Carol Kane to do it. Let's really make it a Carol Kane character. Um 
but I, I think it was like, okay, fine. You were honest. Okay. I'll, I'll get it online. And I think the no sir thing was kind of like, um, I don't know. I, I, it, it didn't seem absent. So, and you pick up on it, but I didn't. So I don't think that was, I don't know. This is the third scene that they have together uh, in this episode. There's another one following. And the progression, the scenes, there's a lot that happens in each. And, and it's you're exactly the scenes right. themselves. I'm sorry? I thought you were exactly right. I mean, that's... Yeah. there. It's only four scenes, but there is a growth all the way to the very end. Right. And it, it, that was very well done. And we'll get to that. So you know, I'm most curious to see. I mean, I've seen, you know, episodes where you know they have like the you know they go back to like these different things. This is one that I would like to see and edit, just of those one after the other. Yeah, yeah, it was because good because of that. Um, yeah, I'm sure most of the ones that were filmed when they were on the collector, which I originally thought was the Enterprise engine. Um, when they're in the collector, the um, you know, I'm sure all those were filmed at around the same yeah. time. Um, but you know, the, the following scene was on the shuttle, and yeah, you know, I agree. I as I'm glad they didn't make it the whole episode. Right, they just they but were, it was a it was quick, good, quick. yeah. It was good character development. It was good relationship dynamic development. And I think it was good for these two characters. I and mean, actually, I think both, all the interactions with Kelia tonight, uh, the ones with Ahura too, where when earlier when she reminded her about, you know, you know, you know, you haven't really talked to me. You know, it's... You know, I think I think it's just a really it was a really good place for her to be in an episode that we ended up thinking about Hammer and having Hammer back in a way. Yeah. And now, I like the fact that they can stand up in this space shuttle and yeah. that there are seats where people sit and actually do something instead of being being a being Oh a my god, I love that. Last that was one of the things I loved about Last week's episode was, you know, you got such a beautiful look at that gorgeous shuttle set. Yeah, yeah, no, you did. It was good. Now, folks, this is what I felt was one of the better parts of the entire episode. This next scene took up almost an entire page of notes for me because I almost wrote it down word for word. So I'm going to ask a little bit of indulgence. I'm almost going to read it beat by beat. So I'm going to ask my co-host to interrupt me when they feel it's appropriate, and we're just going to go. Kirk and Ohura are now reviewing Ramon's logs. And Ohura realizes what is happening, and she says, the damage in his brain is the same thing as mine, except I think I'm a day and a half behind him. And she's starting to feel the weight of that reality of well, her thought process. And then Kirk says, did you hear they're serving real cookies in the mess? Not synthesized cookies, real cookies. Want to go get a cookie? And she's like, you <laughs> dumb ass, you know. <laughs> just, I just, and he, I don't need a cookie. And I think he says, sure. Because then he says, okay, now you sound crazy. Because <laughs> who doesn't need a cookie? And then he says, it's not a joke. That's the problem. And then Ohura describes her family tragedy. Kirk sympathizes. And then she breaks down over Hemmer. And it is very dark and deep as to what's going on. And then Kirk is the Kirk that we know. Look. I could tell you a comforting fairy tale, but we both know the truth. Our job puts us up against death more than is fair, and we may not like it, but we do have to face it. And right now, death is winning. It claimed your family, 
It claimed your friend. It convinced you to forget them because it's less painful than holding on to their memories. Now you can let death win or you can fight back and you fight back by holding on to them. Folks, I'm thinking to myself when I'm watching this, I said, that's the Kirk I know. I, I, I didn't, in the back of my mind, I heard, I don't believe in a no win scenario. I heard it. I saw it. He was talking to a real human being. He said, you know what? Yes. And you're letting death win. And yes, fight back. Yes. You know, Jason, there are times when reality hits, doesn't it? So keep that in mind, Jason. Um, so you 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 do not let it win and then kirk says still no to that cookie <laughs> <laughs> this is a sense of humor that we know kirk to have and but it was real because ohora i don't know if she gave up but she was in a bad place and kirk saw her there at the bar and he saw her there again. And this time he spoke those words. This is the same Kirk that we know. I don't know your thoughts, Greg and Richard. I really, I really thought this was exactly the same thing. I'm like, you know, this is, you know, um, you know, the, I'm, 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 I'm tongue tied. The, um, one of the things I liked was you know, the thing about the cookie, and it made me think of Star Trek II with, you know, first order of business, <laughs> you know, yeah, but getting something to eat. And um, oh yeah, you, Kirk loves to eat. He does. Um, it, yeah, and I, they even played that up in the Chichi movies where he was, they had like an apple or something on occasion in his hand, and the. Um, it, it was it was close, it was personal, it established the relationship between these two without taking up too much space in the story. Um, it had this really deep, strong message. Um, you had the emotion um, from the actress playing Uhura. Um, you had this little bit of lightness, however, with the cookie thing that like would bring you back so you know this is that balance i mean you know it, you know you would you know you weren't just oh my god Amber, oh let's get a cookie <laughs> you know and I, I i i appreciate what the writers do with this it, it's the balance that next generation had um especially in later episodes um you know the, you know, you're seeing the people as as part of the story and not the story itself. Yeah, Richard. Well, this is where we get Kirk's philosophy that he can cheat death, and where when we see in other as he gets becomes captain and in the movies, and he just. He, he knows he can, you know, cheat death. He doesn't, he looks death in the eye and just goes for it. You know, he just doesn't fear death. He doesn't want death to win. And we see that, we will see that through TOS and through the movies. Yeah. And now a little bit here, yes. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's probably had this philosophy. And I still, you know, and plus with the humor thing, and he's, he's, he's still working on that a little bit. But on the timing when they have the joke, but yeah. Yeah. Um, it felt real though. Those are real yeah. interactions with yeah. people. And uh it's a cookie. It's like it's it's just it's very well done. Kirk then says, Be right back, and he leaves, and then she's going over the video again with Hemmer. And there he tells her 
to dial down the gain on the antenna. Otherwise, you'll burn down the receiver. She sees it. She'd already heard it before. And then she hears it again. And bingo, for lack of a better word. it She gets it right there. I wrote jackpot. So it shows a lot about Kirk's philosophy and the ability to connect with people. Yeah, you know, that is true. Kirk, the way I heard him described years ago was that he is a warrior. Wait, warrior diplomat or warrior poet? Ooh, I think I'm getting old now. But yes, I think a warrior diplomat. No, I don't know. I think he's more of a warrior <laughs> poet because he knows his history very well. I mean, hell, who can... You know, do the end of, you know, the, oh, damn it, I lost it, you know, in the episode of where they do the independence stuff and all that. So, yeah, okay, I'm lost. But anyway. Um, but when he the Constitution? I'm sorry. Or yeah, the, the Constitution, the yes, thank you. Or the, or the preamble, right? We the people. Yes. Yeah, that one. Thank you. Sorry, boys. Yes. So she says, burn out the receiver. And then she goes and tells Kirk, this is what it is. And says, well, let's go talk to my brother. Uh, and then Sam gets it. He says, there's this theory about, you know, Indiana Jones and the, oh, I'm sorry. I mean, interdimensional beings <laughs> about, uh, you know, being able to, you know, just break in and like attach themselves to us. Like, yeah, like Indiana Jones and the, but anyway, but whatever. So, Sorry. And uh, she says, so my visions are like the vocabulary. Okay. What are they trying to say? And then they talk about the walls closing in, the horrible images, the death suffering. And uh, yeah, that was good imagery right there, how they worked it through. That was That's the Star Trek that we know. I don't know what your thoughts on that. Because right after that, we get notice the refinery is online. This was really well. Good. That's when they figure out that the life is trying to tell them they're going to die. Yeah, and then oh, we, have, we, have to, we have to tell them to turn off the ref, not to turn on the refinery, and then they say, "And who says what well, came on ten minutes ago?" Yeah, that was <laughs> so something they didn't. And didn't Kirk do. say that say to Sam that he could write a paper on that? He gave him some credit. Yeah, um, that's that's later. Yes. Well, whatever. He still gives him credit. Yeah, There's a little bit. <laughs> yeah, but this still. is something. This is something that they did occasionally in Next Generation that they didn't do a lot, and that's you know have the scientist that's good at figuring out things about aliens help figure out things about aliens. You know, yeah. Spock solved every problem in the original series. They rarely had specialists in that generation because there was always data. It was their stock. So I think it was really smart that finally, for the, well, the second time, we get to see why Sam's there. Exactly. You know, and, um, you know, this is, this, this is more of what I would expect Ch Stranger Worlds to be about, where you've got a puzzle to figure out and you, you you need help of the people that know those sciences. You've got the linguist, you've got the xenobiologist, you've got, you know, you know, the, the regular biologist and the doctor and the nurse and and then here's Spock on the side who can fill in all the gaps in physics and things like that. Right after that act four ends and or I'm sorry, right the act ends and we go to the act the final one. Or her and Kirk run to the bridge and they get notified they can't shut the refinery down for whatever reason. And then uh, Uhura switches to well, that view. Remember, and Uhura has to tell convince Pike that they have to they have to shut it down because they're killing life forms. Okay, well, actually, that's a little bit right after that, after that scene. Well, you know so, what I mean. Okay, go ahead. Um, uh, she sees the smoke this time. And this time it pans over and she sees the wrecked shuttle, which is her family, right? Yes. And uh, I wrote down, keep going. I forget why, you know, to keep going. She was telling herself to keep going. 
because okay, yes, she she it was like confronting him and stuff. She never really fully confronted her parents dying in that way. Yeah. Okay, you're right. Even and though we she, didn't see bodies in the shuttle, and actually, the minute she stepped forward, she stepped off the turbo lift. But it, you know, she needed to push past trying to keep that out of her mind. Yeah. She steps off the turbo lift and she explains to them, "We're killing them. The creatures are dying. I can hear them. Lieutenant Ramon died." trying to save them and then pike says how certain are you and i'm i'm very certain sir and uh we got to get everyone off that thing we have to destroy that refinery and just like that the new ensign that's been on the ship for a year tells captain that we have to destroy a multi-billion dollar you know, atmospheric renewal station at which, uh, you know, the company man, Burke, comes in. Do you realize how much that station costs? I don't think Pike can make that decision. I don't think he can blow up. <laughs> okay, I had to work aliens in there, all right? Okay. On the word of his communications officer, he says, no problem. Let's blow this shit up. Everyone evacuate and done. Farragut's captain didn't say a word. No one said a word. Everyone evacuated and going against orders. Ohura herself issued the fire order. I mean, nothing personal, but as captain, I would have said, can I have my ship back now? I mean, come on. Well, well what, you, what I noticed was that she said that, but he nodded his head to the officer. He did nod after she, he, she said that. She did give the order, but Pike still nodded, his, nodded to tell them to go ahead and do it. And the scene was a little bit longer, but it was at this moment where I'm like, this is a priority one project for the Federation. And just like that, they blow it all up. And they say, well, you know, Starfleet can make another gas station somewhere. Really? Are there that many nebulas that have deuterium? Because if there were, why the hell are you even worrying about it? I actually lost respect for Pike at that moment, and I lost respect for the writers. Look, there, two starships are involved in this. There aren't that many starships at this time. Remember, if we go by the backstory, there's only 12 starships. So for Starfleet to commit two of their 12 to a major operation like this, I would have taken the other step as Ohura. You've discovered a brand new race. We get it. Let's see what we can do. Let's bring in our top scientists. Let's bring in our people. And let's see what we can do before we just blow this up. I mean, we're not talking about a spotted owl here, are we? Oh, are we? I just... I... Do you think Starfleet Command, do you think the Federation of Planets is going to be happy that they blew up this big operation on oh, the God, word no. of an engineer, uh, a communicator? Yeah, but if it was to save a life form, they might claim prime directive. But the thing is, you're right. I mean, the Farragut captain didn't call over saying, what are you doing? Yeah. Why are you blowing up this station? I mean, there was no Farragut input. You would think, even after you know, after blowing, you know, what do you, you know, when he's that ordered the evacuation, you think the captain would call over and find out what are you doing, what's going on? Yeah, there was nothing. I mean, we didn't even see the Farragut at all. I mean, we yeah, there wasn't even really time for anyone to explain it to somebody else off screen. Or yeah, the captain of the Farragut was just sitting on his ass, like, okay, I guess whatever he wants to do. I mean, he had no uh, input. Uh, Unless there was an open channel between the two bridges, but they didn't establish but that. Still, he would have he would have said, "Wait, wait, 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 wait." Someone, you know, I. That's the thing is, I mean, I know there was a no time for it, maybe, but still, there was no interaction with the Farragut. Of just, it stood there and watched what happened, and you would think the captain would call over and say, "Okay, you just blew this damn thing up. Why?" You know, even if it was just a quick scene of the 
I don't know. It just, it's just okay. The fair gut was it? It didn't feel like the fair gut was even there. I don't know where yeah. Kirk came from. I mean, Kirk just showed up and there was no ship. I I don't know. You like to see the you like to see the yeah. ships, right? I mean, you like to, if there's two ships, you want to see them side by side, right? All I mean, both. I know I know they're both the same class, but still, you want to see them. You want to see at least one shot of the Farragut and the Enterprise. You know, but that's just me. You want to see that? You want to see the equipment, right? Yeah. And 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 gentlemen, for me, it was right there where I was like, no, no. I just there are times that one thing can just turn you. And yes, I know I am picky when it comes to things, but I I know that they have the ability to make those decisions, but it's just didn't they what did, didn't they release something from the nacelles then before they blew it up or afterwards? Didn't they have like some of these? There little... was, yeah, there were they were they vent they wanted to vent all the deuterium that they yeah, so they right because yeah. when they arrived they were filling up. Yeah, so they did that. That was kind of cool to see that to see how the nacelle just shot them out. Did the nacelle pop out a little bit when it did that, or did, or was that just my imagine? I don't know. I well, only watched it once. I don't recall that. Yeah. Well, I mean, the, end, I mean, the, end of the, cell, the little bulb thing, the penis part, the head of the penis, did it just, you know, kind of pop out? But anyway, I see. So you're, you have something to get some blowing up, just blowing it up. Yeah, seriously, just like that. It's like, are, are you kidding me? I mean, come on. Come so on. I, they could, have, they could have pulled the plug on whatever the system was. I mean, yeah, they, it wasn't fault. The computer wasn't falling. They could have severed the computer from the. I mean, there was so many other things. You could. So couldn't they just? I, they could have pulled really the thing out of could, there. Okay, but they couldn't turn it off, right? I mean, they wanted to turn it uh, off. Wow. Then they were, and then uh, uh, <laughs> the engineer, what's her name again? Pylon Pelia. or whatever. Pelia. Yeah, Pelia said, "I can't shut it down. We can't turn it off." And that's when Kirk said, "Well, that's when Kirk." said evacuate right is that the proper timeline on that because they couldn't turn it off yeah i think so yeah yeah i just i, I just don't understand I, look there it's very easy to turn off a refiner i mean come on let's get real folks i know they say you can't turn it off it's baloney yes you can okay you just un uncouple the power source from it and it'll eventually shut down come on folks they have odns back then and they have uh, what was it? Um, go a uh, GNDN goes nowhere, does nothing. They could have cut those pipes back then too. So it's just well, they only had the like whole several thing minutes like that. left in the show. They didn't have time to do that. How do you know that it will not start a fire in the nebula? I mean, come on, man. There's so many. It's just at that point, it just tuned me out. I appreciate your comments though about the engineer saying we couldn't shut it down. I said, oh, come on. It's yeah, just, no, it was a little bit of that next generation too easy of a way to wrap something up. At first, I thought they were going to get away from that because they couldn't just shut down the refinery. But then I'm like, I, 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 I was, I, so, I just thought the whole thing was a little bit too rushed. There could have been a little bit more discussion, as you suggested, um, and. I still didn't understand why he allowed her to give a fire order. <laughs> How sure of you are you? How sure of this are you? Very sure. You've got the return poisoning. You got all it's like it's just I, I I don't get it. And for me, that was the failure in this episode. It was enough for me to say, Oh, come on. Come on. But, that and, and, and I his flippant saying, remark. I Pike wasn't, really in, the, build another gas Pike wasn't really in the pipeline with what your horror was going through either. I mean, she just came on the bridge and said, "We got to do this, right?" I mean, yeah. Pike was. I mean, Kirk was in the pipeline, but not Pike. He just took her word for it. So, I mean, that's a lot of trust. Yeah. yeah. Well, Kirk was standing there, so I mean, I don't know. It, yeah. it, it did yeah. seem like a, you know, oh, yeah. We're 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 past the past the last act 
you know, well, the, the thing is, if, 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 if this was next George, next generation, Jordy would have found a way to shut it down. <laughs> oh, if this a lot of Tories found a and way. Then, to and then Scotty would have performed a miracle. It would have been like five minutes, right? Not even five minutes before the end. It would be like, oh yeah, yeah this thing, this magic thing here, Boop, yeah. all better. Either Jordy or Data would have figured it out. Yeah, and like I said, Scotty would have performed a miracle in the last second. So, I, I, I don't know. I don't. But it seemed like maybe you're right, Roger. Just blowing her up was the easy way out. And right after that, Hammer reappears on the bridge, normally. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So implying that Ohura was correct and everything was just fine. And then Ortega says, "That's it." And if you think about it, that was a perfect line for the entire episode. That's it? Seriously? That's it? That's all there is? So that was very frustrating. And then we get two more final scenes. And then we get the payoff. Pelia and number one. <laughs> Starship Maintenance 307. Huh? I swear she was going to say um, English 101. So, Starship Maintenance 307, I took your class and you gave me a C. So, she knew exactly who she was and that's why she liked her. And that's why I says, well, you know what? It doesn't matter what you are, who you are. You were an instructor. I outrank you. And then the other part was, yeah, your work was sloppy. <laughs> so... And she tried um, to defend was, her paper, right? She said, I put a lot of work in that thing. You know, she was like really part of this paper. Yeah. But didn't yeah. but didn't Paley also accuse her of like she didn't of her like not having her there because Hammer was gone and she was kind of at first thought that was that was it too. Like, look, I know you don't like me, you know, you like Hammer, but I'm the new person and you don't you're kind of resenting me for that. Wasn't that part of it too earlier in the show? It I know it was right there. It so was whole right after was she said it was sloppy, and that's exactly what followed what you just said. Right. Yeah, yeah. but she said something similar to her earlier in the episode, too. Yeah, and and yeah. then she said, I get it. I've been there too many times. So there was an understanding between the two. Yeah, there might have there might, there might have been a bridge starting to get built between the two of them mapped after that. Yes. And it was good because both knew of each other, which was not mentioned. And that's the undercurrent throughout the entire episode. There's only four right, scenes, right. and all four were very good. So then we go to the final scene where I called in 10 forward, but that's neither here nor there. Kirk and Ahura, she's sharing pictures. And I think Kirk says, to staying in the fight. So that was good. And then Sam comes over. He says, Farragut is lucky to have you. He says, I'm proud of you. And Kirk's like, wow. And then, and then the look. They're sharing a look. A look. And then I think that's what Horo says. Do I need to be here or something? What, what did Horo say? I don't, oh, I don't remember. remember. Yeah, okay. Well, it was because they were right there. And then he says... Aren't you going to apologize? <laughs> and then I think he says, uh, apologize for being extremely competent? No, I'm not. <laughs> that, was, that, that was kind of funny. That was the brotherly stuff. And then I guess that's where he says something about the paper. And uh, you'll, you'll be able to read about it later. And he walks away. And Kirk says, that was Sam being Sam. And then Spock and Kirk meet, and they have their moment. Yeah, and they ask Spock to sit at the table, so they have. That's when they start talking at the table, all three of them. So Spock, yeah. Spock, uh, Spock, Kirk, and Yahura are, are at the table. Yeah. So, because then, because Kirk asked him to sit down, right? Kirk invited him to have a seat. Yes. Yeah. Um, it was good stuff. I think it was a good ending, but I just couldn't get past that other part. So I don't know. But 
go ahead, gentlemen. What are your other thoughts on this? We've done the episode. That wasn't a huge detractor. Um, the one thing that I was kind of glad of, considering the earlier scenes with Lalan, that they didn't have Lalan like kind of lurking as they were pulling back away from the table in the corner of the club. Um, I half expected Lon to be like kind of steaming that Kirk was sitting with her. They didn't do that. Thank goodness. Um, it, it was just one of those things I half expected these writers to put in there. Um, I didn't, I had similar issues with blowing up the big station that you did so, so quickly without, you know, much debate. But it wasn't that huge of a detractor for me. Um, I thought this was a refreshing, strong ep- episode after a few that, in my opinion, were meh Star Trek, although really good television. This was really good television and really good Star Trek. Once again, I'm going to say Kirk blows up the station and there's no input from the Farragut captain. It's like, yeah. think that he went, what are you doing? Because he just fired. There was no, the Farragut had no warning what they were going to do. And that, I guess that, that's kind of an issue too. I mean, no, you know, Farragut, oh, I guess Kirk knows what he's doing, blowing up this multi-billion dollar, you know, this big, you know, this, all this trust in Kirk. And I'm sure Kirk was going to, could have had a pie, would have a lot to explain to some admirals why he blew this damn thing up. Yeah. You know, Starfleet, I mean, you would think there'd be uh, rep- repercussions, but you probably won't see any. But the ending, you know, is Kirk and Spock finally meeting. Now, that was cool. And I, I, and I thought we were going to see somebody, too, when the camera backed out at the end, someone looking, like you said, maybe she would be back, you know, maybe not mad, but just giving him a look like, you know, that's Kirk, but I, you know, but, you know, might be not mad, but still looking, giving him the eye or something, you know, because her drinking and just looking over at Kirk and them three talking. And I, I guess I'm surprised, or I was not surprised, I was disappointed that we rolled out and there was no payoff. Oh, I thought that I, I was glad because to me, that handshake with Kirk and Spock was the payoff. Well, I know, yeah, but still, the fuss, so they pulled out, you didn't see, but you didn't see any, you know, but that was a good mm-hmm. payoff, them sitting down, I guess, well, they've done that before in the TOS, they just back out and they just keep talking on the bridge yeah. or somewhere, so it, it goes, hey, so they have done that before. That is the classic, way they framed it. Trek. Sorry, the way they framed it, Kirk and Spock shake hands and Ohoro's right through the middle. That was actually well done. I did appreciate that. That was really good. Um, Elizabeth says, one of the better episodes, but I do agree the ending could have been a lot better. Seemed rushed and no command order. Yes. Now, Richard did say, I don't see any repercussions. Au contraire, au mon capitan. There is a pissed off admiral that no longer is happy with Kirk. You guys know who I'm talking about. He is... Admiral Robert April, who Kirk lit up in the second ep, or I'm sorry, Robert April lit up Spike in the second episode. I said Spike, didn't I? I mean Pike. Right. And uh, are we talking? Ha, talk about this, we haven't cross- seen oh, this Robert cross- April Buffy? since that episode. Yeah, but Spike. I guess you were thinking of Buffy, so I don't know how when that crossover happened. I but- think so. You're so right. So look, all I can say is that. I think there are going to be ramifications about this. So and you think I think later Robert on, April is going to be up his butt. Like a banana in Beverly Hills Cop. Okay. Okay. I see it. Maybe, you know, I guess maybe it's not closed. We'll see. Interesting. I just think there are going to be a little bit of ramifications for that. But we'll see. So your final thoughts on this? Um, what are yours? All right. Thank you. Um, I agree with everyone here. I think we did a good job going over the episode. There's a lot to like in this episode. There is, folks. It's a good story. 
It's just I could not get past that one thing at that moment. I was really angry about that because <laughs> I understand bureaucracy. I understand the way things are. And there is a lot of effort that goes into that. Yes, I appreciate being enlightened and reminded that they couldn't shut it down. Baloney. That is a major, major project. Jane, uh, Captain Pike, it's not just a gas station. There's more to it. So I'm figuring there are going to be some ramifications on that down. But yes, Big Dog. And uh, I think Big Dog is waiting for me to contact him because uh, we're going to be traveling tomorrow morning. So I think he's like, dude, aren't you done yet? So I think we're going to be talking about that a little bit later. So you um, said something earlier about giving the command order. What, what did you mean? Who gave the command order? There wasn't one. Aurora. Roger mentioned it. Like, it's, we, because you know, you're, you're talking about your Aurora oh, giving the she command ordered order. ordered fire phasers or fire torpedoes or whatever. Like I know. said, Pike then nodded to, 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 of to course. Agree with you. you know, and, and all I said was, after that, I would have said, may I have command of my ship back? I mean, come on. I think well, yeah, she, Kirk, Kirk would have said that. Yeah. Kirk, that's something Kirk would have. I mean, if Kirk was captain, then he would have said that. You know yeah. what I mean? That's that's a Kirk thing, I think. I don't know. Maybe well, the Kirk thing, thing was that he said he was rubbing off on her. On her. Yeah. Yeah. Or yeah. They... Having an influence. <laughs> um, look, <laughs> it wasn't a bad episode by any stretch of the. Uh, come on, it's just that part did get to me, and that was okay. But I do appreciate the logic of my co-host and everyone in the chat room here. So. Yeah. Oh, Big Dog well, wants to know, where are we traveling to? I don't know, Big Dog, where are we going? <laughs> I think we're going to San Diego, right? Yes, we're going to San Diego. So, are you driving down? Yeah, we're going to drive down in the morning. We're going to see how I can do. I haven't done anything for the four days since I had the heat stroke. So I... um I'm looking forward to being able to get it out. It should a be bit. interesting without the panels. We'll see. Yeah, like I said, I've never been there. I'm looking forward to it. Um, I'm actually feeling a little bit better that I'm going to be going with someone that I know anyway. And uh, yeah, I it's a last minute thing. So I was really surprised and very happy. But no, I'm not going to be on any panels. It was, I was told, oh, dude, you mean you're going to... No, the ARC panel did not come to pass. There is another panel that was suggested, but I... No, 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 no. I'm going down there. I am looking forward to seeing what it's like. And yes, I'm going to be a voyeur. I understand a lot of people dress up. Yeah, I haven't been, but I've seen lots of pictures. Um, I'm going to be taking lots myself. One of my connections to the modeling groups, I believe, is doing a panel. Um, I don't recall. I bookmarked it, and I was going to go back and read more about it. But um, that should be interesting. <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly, Jay. The, that to the last comment. Never have either. So, But that's okay. Uh, people give me way too much credit. I, I, if if I were to work a poll, I would kill the industry, straight up. I appreciate the love and respect that I get from these people, but I will never work a poll because I will destroy it for everyone. It's one of those that once you see it, it's done. Um, do you guys remember the movie, the the three movies that were made with, um. The, the the singing girls, the acapellas from school or whatever, and in one of the movies, the real big girl, her 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 dress, she's on the swing, and it rips, and she basically flashes the president. No, I only I saw part of the first one. I think I know which ones you're talking about. Yeah. Oh no, I've I've seen all three. Hell, I saw Lost in Translation. So I. <laughs> Anyway, um, it's funny where I forget the young lady's name, but she's a big star now. She's she's she, hilarious. Oh my god, yes! And she's doing the thing up there, and while her theme snaps in the third movie, and she's hanging on a swing, and 
She mooned the president. Damn funny. And that's the thing. You will never, ever unsee that. So for me to work upon it, no. See, even Elizabeth has remained quiet. Thank God she's keeping my dignity. Because even she's like, no, no. <laughs> no. Even Jay's like, no, hell no. Richard, don't even. Don't be stupid. Watch. I'm just, I'm just sitting here. Khan has been more crowded on the floor since 95% of Hollywood isn't there. The panels are much easier to get into. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, okay. All right. And anyway, so um, I don't know what your scores are on this one. We're going to do the traditional A through F, folks, on this one. Um, I'm going to come up with my score real quick. But uh, uh, Greg, ooh. I almost said another name right now. Thank God I did not. Um, That's like I believe it or not, because of my last name, I get that a lot. Ooh, all right. Do you know um, that we had a host on this program? Well, not this program on this network. Travel Itch Radio is on every Thursday, and as you know, Dan Schlossberg, folks, you don't know who he is. Look him up. He does Travel Itch Radio on our Blog Talk Radio channel. Uh, Dan Schlossberg is probably the baseball novelist. He is awesome. His co-host for the first so many years was Christine Tibbetts. And for those of you that know history, like Tibbetts, one day I asked her, I said, are you related to uh, Paul Tibbetts by chance? And her very short and curt reply was... Um, Yes. That was it, dude. That was it. Yeah, um, you should see Roger when he wears it. I, I don't have Daisy Dukes. So, I, again, I do not have Daisy Dukes. And uh, thank you. I appreciate the... I was going to say alliteration, but that's incorrect. Uh, the imagery. Thank you, but no. No. Again, you see, I'm telling you, even Elizabeth's gone quiet. because She's all like, blah. Oh, my eyes are burning. You see, so I would give this episode a C plus. Wow! Wow! It really burned my hide. You really it, don't wow. like that, do you? Whoa! You, you're Folks, like, I even said this. End, huh? I said this early in the episode. I said, dude, it really... I know. I, I didn't think it was that much of a... God, this was such a strong one. I was giving it an A minus, and that was only... A minus was just because of that. Um, wow. Elizabeth gave it an A. Oh, uh, Jay says, not a B? Uh, <laughs> are we talking about someone, Jay? Just curious. Get it? Not a B? Uh-huh. All right, they're not going to help me out on this one. Okay, so Elizabeth gave it an A. Missed that reference. Uh, what's your grade, gentlemen? Because uh, Roger's going to give it a C plus. I might move off that, but it just it it just really got it really graded on me that whole thing. Wow. <laughs> um, I'm not prepared to argue that. I am not. I'm not. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a lucky guy. I didn't know the signs. And I had a blog that I used to write for a lot. And one time I said, oh, my God, we were shopping at Target. And lo and behold, my significant other at the time had to buy a bra, brassiere, and I saw the size. It's 42D. And I was like, I knew I was a lucky bastard. But damn, I didn't think I was that lucky. And I commented on my blog about it. Well, a coworker read it. And uh, Jay, you actually know this co-worker, so we're going to leave it at that. But um, the very next day at work, um, the co-worker said, that's nothing. I'm 44D. I'm like, oh, really? Oh, you're going to make fun of a man's uh, life, right? You're going you're gonna, to you're gonna show off, right? Uh, you know, put up or shut up. But uh, fine, no problem. The young lady shared with me the size, and I was impressed, no doubt. Thank you. So a few days went by, and I think it was during the 
the wet season. It was cold, whatever. And we'd gone to Carl's Jr. And there's about eight of us. We're having lunch. And someone's sneezing, whatever. And then someone says, what are you taking? Oh, I'm taking Robitussin. What are you taking? Oh, Comtrex. And, you know, all this, right? They're just doing whatever they're doing. And all of a sudden, someone says Claritin, whatever. And then I just look up and I said, 44D? <laughs> In front of everyone. <laughs> I just, you know, I was like asking the question, like, what do you think? Folks, for those of you that are older, you know there's cough medicine called Formula 44D. Okay. But my thing was, you want to be a little bitch? No problem. <laughs> Just out of the blue, in front of everyone. 44D. Unfortunately, the poor person was mortified. She was taking a bite of her meal, and she froze, and she got all red. I mean, I mean, it was red. Dude, had the lights gone out, she could have guided us out. That's how glowing she was. Everyone knew something had happened, but they didn't know what had happened because we were talking about medication. And all I asked was 44D. And I was told later, why did I do that? And I said, why did you do it? <laughs> I was just clarifying if it was true or not. What a bastard. Huh? What a bastard. Ah, that happened like 15 years ago. Statue of limitations have already passed. We were on lunch. It's done. I even remember the date. It's in my diary. <laughs> I mean, you don't forget shit like that. But anyway, it's all good. Uh, I hope you guys like that story. But Big Dog says something as uh, I apologize for my grooves here. This is normal to sports talk with the guys. Oh, okay. Oh, and wait. unfortunately, Jay, you know who it is, Jay. <laughs> so we'll leave it at that. I've been Jay's like, Wait, is that, yeah, huh? Yeah. So it's all right. Oh, I, I'm not. I'm not phased by it in the least. I'm just... Dude. It was brilliant, man. I mean, you got to hand it to me, dude. That one was brilliant. <laughs> it was great. I mean, oh, my whole thing was, you never brag unless you're willing to put up. I mean, what, what, what are you You're telling me that yours are much more well endowed <laughs> than, than, than what I have access to? Don't be a big... <laughs> so anyway, those are my thoughts. Well, maybe not. Maybe her chest is two inches wider underneath them. Um, I don't know. I'll never know. Thank God. I'll never know. So it's all good. <laughs> yeah. So I give it a C plus. Elizabeth gives it an A. What is your score, Greg? Uh, a minus. Almighty? I'll give it an A. Woo. That's impressive. Unfortunately, I'm the one that brings it down. So we'll do the yeah. curve. Folks, we yeah, will do you, the curve on this one. Yeah, you were like, uh, you are like, uh, oh, God, what was that class? No. Um, I, oh, it was actually anthropology. Yeah. But you, you, you oh, how was, funny. Uh, it's xeno-anthropology? It? No, regular anthropology. It, it was the semester I tried to take on three courses. Oh, Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I gave up on that after my first year. Working full-time and part-time school. Yeah, three as term was too many. Oh, Jay many gives it a B++. Plus plus. plus plus. Okay. So, Jay, I don't know how to do a mathematical one for that. Well, I guess it would be a B is a 3.0, so that'd be a 3.33. Yeah. I guess. 3.33. Yeah, I had a third. Yeah, that's the average. So, okay, so I'll, I'll have to reevaluate it. But it's just that one really just tuned me out, folks. I, th I, I really think it's a good episode. It's just, yeah. yeah. I, am, I am willing to revisit it if they follow up on it. There have to be ramifications for this. So if there are, are you going to change your grade? I just said, yeah, I would consider definitely changing my grade. If there are ramifications. Oh, I, oh I'm sorry. I missed it then if you said that. Sorry I, about that. That's my bad. Maybe I get, maybe get some hearing aids. 
oh no, I'm I'm the one that's going to need the hearing aids. So, so we had two yeah, A's, an A minus. C oh, plus, sorry, and a B plus. Um, yeah, two A's, A minus, and a B plus. So you got your calculator, good. Raj. I'm sorry. You got your calculator. Oh. <laughs> oh, I just did it. It comes out to two point five three. Really? But Raj, that's you're dragging us down. Man. What? You're dragging us down. That's why I said due to the curve, guys, we'll let it go. Okay. Wow. Really? The C brought it down that much? That's what I'm saying. That's crazy talk. Yeah. Okay, because if you go with fifteen without the C plus, there's four. So four divided by fifteen, it two point six six. Wow. That is even without my no, that's wrong. I can't be right, Raji. Yeah, hold wrong. on. Sorry. Something's Three. Oh, guys, an A is a four. I'm so sorry. There's a four glitch in the plus system. 3.7 plus four plus the 3.3. No, no, that's 15. Oh, divided by four. 3.75. Uh, 3.75. There we go. There we yeah, go. Oh, I thought we had two A's. I thought. Uh, yeah, we do. Yeah. Now we're talking two through. A's. A B plus from J. Yeah, and then an A minus. An A minus from me and a C plus from you. Yeah, well, I, I didn't put in the C plus, but okay, I'll do that oh, now. Okay. So that's a four. Right, so that's where I got four, the three five from. 3.7 plus 3.3. Whoops. .3. Do it right, stupid. <laughs> oh, God. Clear. It's four plus four plus 3.7 plus 3.3 .3 plus a 2.3. So that's 17 divided by 5. That's a 3.46. So that is a B plus with my score. That's not too bad, then. You didn't drag us down like we thought. Awesome sauce. Yeah. Good stuff. I'm looking forward to the, uh, the next episode um, where we're going to have lower decks, the crossover. So... By the way, folks, I do want to give some people some programming notice. As I mentioned, we will be doing Ahsoka review on Thursday nights um, starting, I believe, somewhere, the first week of Ahsoka. We're also going to be reviewing Lower Decks. So we don't have a start date for that, but we're going to be doing that as well. I don't know if we're going to do separate programs. We may because Lower Decks is on Thursday. We're going to keep trekking across the universe for Ahsoka on Thursday, even though we watch it on Wednesday. We may move uh, the other one to Friday or even Sunday night like we were doing for a while. I have to speak to my co-host. I'm not going to just make a unilateral decision on that. And I will be doing Futurama. I don't know when. I have an open invite to anyone and everyone that wants to join me. Monday night, Dave, uh, I'm sorry, Futurama returns at midnight or 12.01 on July 24th. So we'll see. Um, I love Futurama. I can't wait. And I'm so looking forward to that. Uh, let me see. Better call Saul. I don't know. I haven't been paying attention. You have to I'm, speak to I, 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 uh, I'm just, uh, <clears throat> well, Jay has gone through something. So I'm just waiting to see when he's ready. That's That's what that's all about. Uh, Jay had a personal issue. I don't know if he wants to discuss that, but I'm waiting for him to see when he's ready. Also, yeah. I want to mention that on the 29th of July, there will be a show in the slot of Sports Talk with the Guys, but it will not be Sports Talk with the Guys. There might be some sports, but from what I understand from uh, Big Dog and Anime Girl, it's going to be also a general chat show on the 29th. So, I guess this is going to be a hodgepodge of whatever the hell we want to talk about. Am I correct with that, Big Dog? Is that Am I getting it right there? That's just going to be a free-for-all kind of? So Let's why is it only on YouTube? I did not set that up, so I do not know. I think Big Dog did that. So I... I All right. You want, I mean, can you still add other channels even though I can edit that, yes. right? Okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll edit, edit it to give it more, the more, uh, more channels than uh, later on. 
<clears throat> so next next week we've got this old scientists. These old scientists. Oh, you mean TOS, right? These old scientists. That's what Jack says. Um, what do you mean by that, big uh, big dog? I don't. T the original series. These old scientists. TOS. Well, right. Yes, but he's asking the comment in the chat room. I, I'm not sure. I don't know. We'll oh. see. Um, anyway, y'all, I'll, I'll, I'll add more channels, but that's what. What well, anime girl mentioned to me it was going to be a general chat show, and so I, I don't know if I got that right or not. So, I mean, I'm just going by what anime messaged me, what she said, and I don't know. I think she mentioned Speedy and, and maybe even Dream join in. I don't know how many will join in, but and I'll get more clarification. Uh, Okay, Peter, I I listen. I just going by what she told me. So you're gonna so, all right. I got you. Well, I'm glad you uh, guys are starting up again, and uh, we'll see. So, um, I did get news. I didn't share it with anyone. I was frustrated over the last week that they canceled the MRI that I was gonna have, but I just got notified yesterday that it's back on. So, oh God. With all the therapy appointments and everything that I have, it's just so exhausting. So, and they switched medication. I'm useless in the morning. I don't want to hear from anyone. I am useless in the morning. That's why I'm not doing programs in the morning because I'm just useless. I've been told by people who said, "Oh, but you should be on when you're useless." So I'm already doing enough of that. All people right. think that an intoxicated scorekeeper is a funny thing. Uh -huh. So we should see. Uh, Big Dog says, not a problem. It's not like we talk only sports anyway. Okay. So it'll I'll, be good. I'll just, I'll just add more uh, channels to what Big Dog posted. Uh, then, Jay, I will set it up for this Sunday if you want. We will do a show as usual then. If that, if you want to get back to it, I'm ready to go. So uh, I will set it up. And uh, I think we're doing episode five. So uh, that's better call Saul. Yep, better call Saul. We'll, we'll be on Sunday, and I think we're doing episode five. I so all right. It'd be good to get back with it, Jay. I'm glad you want to go. I I missed it. Uh, so no. I guess I guess it'll be that's, a busy weekend for us for NDB Media. Yeah, that that's not true, folks. Drunk Roger is fun. No, that is not true. <laughs> so we're okay. All right. So I think that's going to be it. Okay. This was a good episode. Um, I think they're going in the, the good direction with Strange New Worlds. I'm glad we're doing this. I once again, thank Elizabeth. Thank you. I thank Jay. I thank Peter for joining us as well. Obviously, Richard and Greg, I thank you. And uh, we'll be in contact with Michael. Hopefully, everything is going on well with him, and we shall see. But for now, um, that's going to be it, folks. Thank you. We went, uh, wow. Wow. Yeah, we, we went a lot this time. Oh my god! Didn't I joke about when we thought about doing Futurama at the same night that we'd go to one o'clock in the morning? For me, anyway. Oh, is that what it was? Do you, do you really want to do it at that hour? Okay, yeah. This All is, I know is that <laughs> this is getting it. close to my limit here today. <laughs> oh, and we're already way past that limit. So we'll see you guys. And I thank everyone. And we are out of here. And Big Dog, I will be contacting you shortly. So thank you, gentlemen. We are out. Peace and long life. Good day. <laughs>